ladies and gentlemen, you might be noticing things are a little different on this episode. We attempted to go live, but the almighty algorithm, the almighty servers on both Twitch and YouTube, just, they weren't feeling us. They weren't feeling us. They're trying to stop what's going on here. So whatever's about to take place on this channel, YouTube and Twitch themselves tried to stop. So without further ado, I am joined by the great Andy Brew, Kitties and Mitties, and Unknown. And, you know, we had a roundtable about Rebirth not too long ago. Here we are discussing a little bit of Reunion. And uh, I'm curious to pick your guys' brains, see what it is you may have liked, may have didn't like, what you think this means for Remake. There's a lot to talk about. But first things first, I want to, um, I want to address, I guess, what you would call the elephant in the room. What, unfortunately, has been the hot topic of discussion when it comes to re uh, Reunion. And I'm curious what you guys think, and that's the voice acting. Um, I know this could be a hot, touchy topic for a lot of people, so um, let's just get it out of the way first. What do what is our general impression of the voice acting compared to the old voice actors from the PSP game? Uh, whoever's willing to jump in first, the uh, the floor is yours. Can go. <laughs> okay, so here's what I think. I think I still prefer most of the voices from the PSP. Most. Like, I still prefer Rick um, as Zach. Um, I still like, you know, all the original voices. But that being said, I think the new voice actors are doing great. I think they did a phenomenal job. You know, I have very little complaints, honestly, about the work that they did in Reunion. I think I've said this a couple of times to at least Andy, I know. But the only thing that I would have changed about Remake and the voices is the voice that they picked for young Yuffie. Um, she was really cute because, you know, Yuffie's a cute little girl, but I just thought it was lacking that, like, mischief. <laughs> I almost think she needed a little bit of scruff to her, where, like, I wish they would have voiced her almost like they voiced, like, little boys instead of little girls. Yeah, yeah, like, she I wish she would have like, talked really. just a little more like this. I know. I they need to hire you. Good. What the heck? Really <laughs> That's really uh, good, we're, mod, we're just going to mod her in. I'm Yuffie Kiritsagi. <laughs> Well, oh, there goes your yeah. new voice actress right there. The for treasure you. princess here to take it from you. Shoo, shoo, shoo. <laughs> you know, but I agree. They, 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 that Yuffie yeah. spunkiness was mm -hmm. missing, you know? Yeah, I was getting too much Marlene and not enough Yuffie, I think. Yeah. Which is funny because you... when I heard it, I was like, did they just use Marlene's voice actor? Cause... <laughs> yeah, I think we all thought that, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm with Kitties. Um, mm -hmm. I think the new actors, they did a great job. Um, I also prefer and you know, this is coming from somebody out of all of us here kitties is the only one who's actually played the psp version we've this actually never we we've only ever watched the cutscenes, you know and never actually uh got our hands on it but um you know just from just from experiencing that it that way um i think i i'm in the same boat you know i, I do prefer rick as zach i do prefer um most of the the old vas uh but i think they did a great job like i think zach was fine i thought he sounded a lot better than he did in uh when you first see him in seven remake i thought his oh his yeah price of freedom speech was like a 100 percent improvement 100 well, percent. and the other and, thing i like that he did that i don't think mm -hmm. enough people are talking about is i like that I like how his performance made Zach almost like grow more than he yeah. did in the PSP version. Like Rick's yeah. performance was outstanding and I love him, but I do like what Caleb did. I thought he started out and Zach was this kind of like silly, happy go lucky kid. And by the end, yeah. he's this super mature adult. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can definitely see that progression through his performance. Yeah, I was curious how he was gonna, um, how uh, he was going to tackle the change. Mm -hmm. in Zach's voice like later on because obviously like the time skip and everything and I think he did a mm -hmm. great job you know and I mean I have to say I think Sean Condi as she uh, not Sheba <laughs> as Genesis was the highlight for me in well, terms of mm -hmm. the voice acting well that's what he I was gonna it. bring up that's what I, mm -hmm. I, I agree with you guys is like I think for the most part mm -hmm. like, like character for character I think I prefer the old voice actors I did actually really like a lot of the new ones i i found myself like feeling like oh i think rick did this part better but you know what i think caleb did this part better and mm -hmm. i can think of a few like um, that's how i feel yeah like oh, one yeah. line i thought caleb really dropped the ball on um when he's with sephiroth right and they, they talk about angel he's like oh i got one of angel's famous lectures and the way rick gomez delivers this line the oh one of those huh there's just like so much pain yeah. 
and just anguish mm-hmm. in it. And I think Caleb was a little bit more casual in his delivery, but that was a line yeah. that's just stuck with me for over a decade. Um, but alternatively, mm-hmm. I actually think Caleb's uh, scenes with Aerith were so strong. To me, so that's, good. that's when he started winning me over. Once he met up with Aerith, mm-hmm. the two of them started having their back and forth. I feel like his abil- I feel like his ability to work with chemistry really kicked in. Um, and I started to really, really feel the character kind of shine through really mm-hmm. when he met up with Aerith. And I don't know if that's just coincidence, you know, for all we know, those could have been the first lines he recorded. Um, mm-hmm. but those in particular stood out to me with him. I think, I do think people may be being a little too hard on him. I thought he really did a good job. I really did. Yeah. And I agree with you. Sure. Is, I, I think you see he sounds mm-hmm. different at the end of the game than he does in the beginning. Like it's way it, different. There's a clear difference in his inflection. And I, I think that's but, and I think that on. goes, and I think that goes with Zach's character progression. Like, I think mm-hmm. he nailed it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And then just another uh, hot, but, another hot take. I'm ready for people to come after me. I like Eric's new voice actress better. Personally. I no, I, I like Brie better. I don't yeah. really think it's close. Maybe I'm, weird I think and... she just, she just gives Aerith, I just think, like a special spark almost. Yeah. I actually think she's the only voice actor who's ever actually understood the role. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Out of, out I would say out of anyone heard... that I've ever heard voice Aerith. Yeah. I think she's got the, the best delivery. Um, I, just I go, completely go, agree. I, and I just want to touch on Genesis as someone who's always liked Genesis. Mm-hmm. The new voice actor for him elevated him beyond belief, in yeah. my opinion. Ooh. Yeah, and as someone who, like, I have always, and I've been vocal how I've been, I've I've always felt very indifferent about Genesis, but, you know, you only get so much from watching the cutscenes versus actually immersing yourself in the game, and um, I will say, like, Reunion, even with um, Sean's take on Genesis, like, has made me, like, definitely more interested in the character, you know, just the way that he... How melodramatic so he is. I mean, he, he was always he was always melodramatic, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. I feel like something with me clicked this time just playing through the game um, that didn't click the last time just watching cutscenes. I think it's his delivery. I, I think it's yeah. just the way he delivered the lines. Like when he was reading Loveless, yeah. like I would have bought the audio book. You know what I mean? Yeah. When he was <laughs> yeah, reading yeah, it, yeah. I was like, oh, do it. Same. I, I think that actor, honestly, if that voice actor started reading audiobooks, even if I didn't like the book, I'd probably I would buy it. I would buy it. Oh, for sure. sure. Is there actually a Loveless book that you can buy? You know, probably in Japan. I I was going to say, if anywhere has it, it has Japan. I don't know if we want to touch on the Japanese voices at all, but I also got to experience some of those um, because I was also just playing around with the Japanese voices on like a second playthrough. Mm -hmm. They also sound amazing, in case anyone was wondering. Did they uh, get different Japanese VAs, or was it the same one? So, the uh, it's the same ones, but I do have to say there are definitely some moments with the Japanese voices that like feel a lot more intense. And I think just because like the actors went like, like I feel like the English actors went like to a ninety out of a hundred, the Japanese went like a thousand out of a hundred. <laughs> and I feel like they always like there are just do. certain scenes. They're just well, I have a strong like, opinion oh about God. this, actually, when it comes to uh-huh. translating things from an original yeah. language to English. Mm-hmm. No matter how much somebody tries to portray the story to you, because I was just watching someone play a playthrough of Nier Automata, mm-hmm. and I've never heard it in Japanese before. And when I heard it in the original language that it was created in, I'm like, I don't even know what they're saying, but it just sounds so much better because like, <laughs> they have the source material kind of for creating the story. Yeah. So I didn't get a chance to listen to the Japanese voices, but that's actually something I really want to do now for my next playthrough is just well, check it but, out to kind of hear that emotion. But even comparing like Caleb's Zach to the Japanese Zach, like it was good. Like he did a good job, I do have to say, like after kind of comparing the two. Well, I feel hmm. like they almost have a cheat code because aren't the Japanese Zach voice actor and the Japanese Aerith voice actor like actually married? Yeah, yeah so I think like, they are. It's, like, yeah, it's like yeah, that's like a cheat code. They are. I'm sure they absolutely nail it uh, in all yeah. of those scenes. Um, but but you know, yeah, so that was just something cool that I thought I'd throw out there. Yeah, but all in all, I actually found myself really enjoying the voice acting. Again, there for there sure. are old ones I prefer. There are new ones I prefer. Mm-hmm. It's a mixed bag for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think it it holds back the experience at all i don't think it not will, at all it'll hinder your experience if you haven't played it yet um mm-hmm. I, I think a I lot agree. of the conversation around it can be a little hyperbolic um 
But you know, uh, kitties, before we got like completely cut off by the internet, <laughs> I did it's... ask you, the one person in this conversation mm-hmm. that actually played the PSP game, I did ask yeah. you to point out some of the quality of life upgrades. So All right. if you wouldn't mind just yeah. retracing your steps there for a little bit. That's fine. I'll just start at the want. beginning. Yeah, go for I'll it. start at the beginning. I'll start at the beginning. Okay. So the big, okay. So the first change that I noticed um, between the combat in the PSP version and Reunion um, is first off the ability to combo your normal attacks. In the PSP version, it was just one hit. That was it. That's what you got. There was no comboing. It was just slash. Um, so in this one, being able to combo them, uh, and not only that, but combo into the assault twister was really cool. Yeah, being able to cancel with really, really cool. Area, well, I, I that was also, my favorite part. I also like yeah. the mechanic that the later into your combo you used it, the more powerful it was. I, I really yep. liked that. <laughs> that was cool as heck. Uh, the second thing was the DMW moves. So the moves that you get from your DMW wheel at the top. Um, it would pop up on the screen and be like, hey, you got this move. Use triangle to use it in this one. And that was really cool because mm-hmm. you could save it for like a tough part of the fight. Or, you know, if you have a heal, like if say you got three Aeriths, you know, and you have that super big heal. If you're at full health, you don't want to use that right away. You want to wait until you've been knocked down a few times, then go ahead and pull that sucker out. Um, but in the PSP version, uh, it just automatically went off. As soon as you got it, it was used. Um, yeah, another change was. I had something else. <laughs> uh, battle stance? Oh, yeah, battle stance. Uh, that was not a thing on the PSP version. That is a reunion exclusive thing, which was really cool. Super powerful. Um, you take less damage. Um, doesn't it close gaps really well? I saw people doing that. It's a pretty good yes. gap closure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that wasn't in the original. So that's obviously super powerful. Um, the way that you... Oh, yeah, materia. So... The way that you have like your materia set up, it's a, it's the same way as the PSP version where you like build a deck. So you start with four, that expands to six eventually. So you pick your six materia that you want to use, but instead of having to like scroll through it almost like birth by sleep, like Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, what they did was they mapped it so that you can use them almost like shortcuts in Kingdom Hearts. So you would have um, you know, it was just a lot easier to use. Um, there wasn't so much scrolling around the only scrolling around you had to do was to use your items i think in reunion that was pretty much it um yeah and so then the next thing the next thing that was kind of different was uh those bars that the boss enemies have like the big bars where it goes 100 75 50 25 and it shows that to you right before they're about to do a giant powerful attack that is most likely going to tear you in half Mm. (laughs) So, yeah, so in Reunion, they gave you the option of being able to either lower or completely cancel that move. In the PSP, it just happened. You know, you would stop what you were doing. The, the cutscene would play. <laughs> they, it just stopped what you're doing. The cutscene would play. Half your health would at least would be gone, usually. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, another quick question. You may have mentioned it. Yeah. All these sort of like cinematic attacks and scenes. Uh-huh. Were you able to skip them in the PSP or were you forced? Nope. Oh, boy. not skippable. Oh, not boy. skippable. That would have oh. added so much time. To my I mean, I don't know. Oh, I don't boy. know what kind of monsters would skip those beautiful pieces of art, <laughs> but they're not skippable in the PSP version, though. No. Oh, oh, there was boy. other one other big thing I think that they kind of messed with a little bit that was a little bit different um, from the PSP version to the reunion version is actually the ending sequence so you know the end where you are fighting to your death yes we yes. all know the end now Spoiler mode. okay so on the psp version in. so in, in reunion they cut you off after a while like they're like you fought enough we're moving on to the next part no 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 in the psp version that was way longer yeah, that I you just remember. kept going you just kept going like the first time i played it i think i was on that fight for at least 45 minutes just like wow. crying. <laughs> it was trauma. <laughs> you're it was so life, much you know? trauma. And Literally fighting you for know, your life. <laughs> you know what's funny? I was like so convinced. I was so convinced. That <laughs> oh my God. What if I actually just try to survive 
and then it actually unlocks some kind of alternate ending. No, nope. Zach was like, "Wait, was that all of them?" Like, I was so convinced. I was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this super secret ending that nope. they may or may not have added." Does not nope. exist. Doesn't exist. But I was so convinced. I'm like, maybe, maybe there's something. You know, but maybe no, but but in the original, <laughs> I almost feel like it's so much more painful because depending on how over leveled you are, like that fight could be so long, and I just feel like it just like. I think it just hit me a lot harder, but I don't know if that's just because I was fighting longer or if it's because, again, I had already played it, so I knew what was coming. Yeah. But, yeah, that was, like, the other big thing that I noticed. But that I didn't, I actually didn't like. I wish they would have kept it the same. I wish they would have made me fight for an hour straight. I actually agree, because back even when I was just, like, limited to only seeing the cutscenes <laughs> on YouTube... I even noticed them. Mm -hmm. like, they kept you there a long... They wanted you to mm. feel it. They want it. you to feel it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And feel it, you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't they... Right the correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't... Um, I think you were saying before, uh, Kitties, didn't mm -hmm. they update... Or didn't they, like, make it more clear, like, how to level up Materia and stuff like that? Yes, like, they did. The so, in Reunion. Clear. Yeah, so, okay, so in the PSP version, they were kind of just like, here's your wheel. It uses SP. You get fancy stuff. <laughs> Have at it, kids. But yeah, in Reunion, they actually, whenever they introduce the DMW wheel, they tell you exactly what each set of values mean and exactly what happens if certain images match. So like the first mm -hmm. two match or the gotcha. last two or the end two or whatever. They tell you exactly what happens when those match. Um, so it gives you more of an idea of what's going on um, and kind of like, takes away that well another thing they did was they also explained how you level up because everybody hated on the dmw wheel before because they were like it makes leveling up random not the case <laughs> it was never the case but people thought because they it wasn't explained that all oh, leveling up is completely random not true <laughs> the way it works is you hit a certain amount of xp and then it like basically makes the chance of you hitting like the 777 value to level up like like you get it within the next like two or three times that the DMW wheel turns. Like it just w ups that probability like so much. So Slot it's not random. In my action RPG. <laughs> <laughs> no, but oh, another difference with the DMW is uh, summons in like the Chocobo modes. That was actually a lot less common in the original. Um, in yeah, the PSP it, version, I, I it kind of happened quite a, like quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot more frequent. Uh, in Reunion. In the original, you got a lot of, like, I, I call them character boobs, but they're the ones that you get, like, from Sephiroth, from Genesis, from Angeal, from Cisne. Mm -hmm. Like, those happened a lot more uh, than the other ones, than, like, Summons and Chocobos and Kate Siths. <laughs> so a lot of a lot of quality of life stuff. Is what I'm yes. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. They took whatever... the, the base combat system and literally just, mm -hmm. like, made it better like they were like oh here are some nice improvements we can make now that the technology will allow us it felt pretty yeah. modern honestly like i felt like if this was a mm -hmm. game that came on came out at like the start of the ps4's life cycle it would have completely fit in you know oh yeah, another thing another thing is the safe points didn't you did not used to refill your uh mp and ap it would refill your hp but that was all it would refill before that sucks, actually. <laughs> you know what? No, you know what? No, I could have. Honestly, I actually think we all would have been just fine with that because I barely used ethers. I barely. Uh, I did them. because oh, I yeah. yeah I used ethers because all I did was use magic. <laughs> that, yeah, at the end of the game, whenever I had like Zach all like, Fair the, the, the hell mage. spells, I was just like pure magic build, just spamming like hellfire. Oh yeah, just cheese yeah. It was a good time. And like once yeah, you get, I respect it. Once you get the buster sword in the game, you can start uh rejuvenating your MP and AP per kill. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. makes it much easier too mm -hmm. to go through yep. without having to use items Ooh. and stuff to kind of restore it. Another thing that's different. I'm sorry. Oh boy. <laughs> they just keep popping into my head. They didn't used to like grade you after all your battles. Really? So in reunion, they kind of like you got hp or mp or ap like a percentage back back, mm -hmm. back yeah, based oh, yeah, off yeah, of the different like, criteria yeah. that you might have met that was not in the original yeah that so. was very nice because then you can uh, you can actually there were moments um i don't know if if uh it was because of that where you can like go over like your max amount but like there were moments where like you can go over like your max amount of like mm -hmm. hp mp AP. that's in, that is in the original that you is can't go original, over gosh. yeah 
God. Because that was cool. But, I was like, oh, I've got, but, I've got... that, but it only came from the DMW. So if you like pulled yeah, to get okay. more HP, it would give you more then or more MP. Like, oh, I've, than, got, yeah. I've got 365 max MP. Oh, mm -hmm. just kidding. Now I have 800. <laughs> like, well, and I think wild. they made it a little, they made it a little clearer when you had like, bonus stuff activate so like during the points in the game where there was no mp cost or like no yeah. ap cost like before it like wasn't like they told you but it wasn't like super clear it was like down in the corner with like your yeah. your bars but in this one it like pops up and it's like hey use all your mp right now <laughs> use all your mp because you're actually going to use none of it <laughs> exactly for the next 20 seconds yeah so that was a little bit clear too which was nice and I don't know if you guys feel this way, but to me, like overall, the combat, it felt like uh, it felt like a much maybe it's just me. It felt like a much simpler version of like seven remake combat. Or, yeah, like, I can agree with that. You know, like, the I'm... feel is there and it's just like it, it kind of fe it felt like Kingdom Hearts scene away where it's like your materia is like basically on a shortcut. You know, to be fair, and... it's always kind of felt very Kingdom Heartsy, but yeah. I always compared it to Birth by Sleep. Yeah. See, yeah. I'm curious. I'm curious what Lightning Returns is like because apparently that's the game the Seven Remake team worked on before Remake. So I wonder mm -hmm. if maybe this uh, Crisis Core Remaster maybe maybe pulled some things out of Lightning Returns because they're a little bit closer in the same time. Because I don't think there was any way they were going to make it feel quite like Remake. Um, but mm -hmm. I wonder if that simplified version maybe suits a build that came just before Remake because like. You know, I definitely see some of the PSP era, like Birth by Sleep stuff in there. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think, like, it did resemble the remake combat system way more than I thought it would. Um, mm -hmm. Just based on, like, again, I was only able to watch the cutscenes on, on YouTube for the longest time. Mm -hmm. But a lot of those included some of the battle scenes in the combat. And the mm -hmm. combat always looked so stiff when I watched it back, but playing this, it felt very fluid. I never really felt that oh, yeah. stiff. A yeah. little, like a little wonkiness here and there, but that's with any video game at this point. Um, oh, well, they they smoothed it out for sure. Yeah. Like with everything, like they fixed the camera, they fixed like movement. Like, yeah, they definitely smoothed it out. Unpopular opinion, sure. but Final Fantasy 13's battle system is like low key amazing. I know that game gets no, crapped on like pretty bad, but 13 is like that's the last ATB system that they use like in the mainline Final Fantasy games. Like after that, it goes to something kind of different. But it's cool that you referenced that, dude. To me, there's two things you there's three things you can't criticize 13 for. It's music, it's combat, and in my opinion, the characters. Plot gets a little all over the this place. This is about to turn into a Final <laughs> Fantasy 13 podcast. <laughs> that moment when you've never played Final Fantasy 13. I also. I mean, yeah. look, look, it's, it's on the list. As far as Final Fantasy, <laughs> the never-ending backlog. As far as Final Fantasy goes, it's overall pretty mid. Overall. But Manny, I will agree with you. That combat system is underrated. It's it's super good. Really fun and intuitive too. Um, lot mm -hmm. of, lots of strategy. Like to me, like some of the best turn-based combat. But anyway, this is Reunion. This is Reunion. Which yes. speaking of Reunion, I'm just going to jump into it. Maybe we could jump back to the game a little bit here and there. But okay. all right. Are we building towards an Angeal Genesis Sephiroth Reunion? Is that what this is? We're building towards oh. something. <laughs> I don't think Angeal. I, I think, think so whatever happens, I think Angeal is dead but what about like, that white going? feather in the rebirth trailer <laughs> <Did she? laughs> I, I always I'm, glad the feather. <laughs> I'm the only one i got that i, I went i didn't miss it i missed it <laughs> i said i think angel is dead jeel oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, um... nah, I think zach's gonna come back with a wing because those wings I want one too. I, want too. I, mean, I think honestly to me, um, because you know, you see that white feather in the rebirth trailer, and it's like it, like the only thing that I can think of is Angeal, honestly. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I, I think like honestly, I personally think that it's purely just symbolic of like Angeal and like mm -hmm. his legacy to Zach, Zach's legacy to cloud you know i i think it's purely symbolic i don't see him coming back however i can i definitely think genesis is making a return and so oh absolutely easy, easy. he 100%. never left 
He never left. No, he, never he left. was at the end of Dirge. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say, he's literally there in Dirge to yeah, pick up the like, at the end of the yeah. fight. So well, like, we I'm know saying, he's alive. I'm saying in Rebirth. Like, oh, I think, yeah. Like, yeah. I think there's sure. going to be... Like, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if... we might. I can't remember if we talked about this in the last podcast, but I wouldn't be surprised if, like, Genesis, after the whole you know, meets the goddess and then just whoosh, is gone in Zack's timeline, if it is like an alternate timeline, whatever it is, you know? I wouldn't be surprised if he's the one in the Northern Crater in that area and not Sephiroth, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, and then, I don't know. Like, I always have this, like, I always have had oh. Technically, this. he meets the goddess and then Zack drags him back up and then he's picked up yeah, in sure. the helicopter. By Whis and Nero, and then that, to that be continued yes. in Dirge. Yes, I don't know. I, I, I think like, but at the same time, it's like, is was it just the the ending of of uh, Crisis Core and Seven Remake that was slightly altered, or were, the, were there other things that they're going to touch on in Rebirth that actually were altered as well? You know, so that's kind of where my mindset is because we obviously the big difference is. Zach is dead. Zach is alive, right? But um, it makes me oh. think: well, Are there other things that change as well? Maybe Angel will make some kind of return. We don't know at all everything that was changed. You know? I mean, you're right. We don't. Mm. But I'm kind of hoping that maybe Genesis finds a way to reappear with Nero and Vice because mm. they're in the DLC. <laughs> yeah. I just want to. Yeah, I would love for them to make a return. I want to see a Cloud yeah. Zack versus Sephiroth Genesis fight. Like, yes. I don't care if well, it's fan please. fiction. <laughs> please. Wait, do you It'll think right Genesis it. will fight alongside Sephiroth? What's that? It's complicated, man. I was about to say, do you think they'll fight alongside each other? I don't Like yeah, Genesis and Sephiroth? True. I think Maybe he believes not. too much in his loveless prophecy. I feel like Genesis doesn't want to fight with anybody. Like, he just wants to be by himself. No, nah, he's the, the hero, guys. Didn't you learn anything? <laughs> Well, didn't you read loveless <laughs> well that's what's that's what makes him difficult to understand right now though right is because mm -hmm. you do reach a point in reunion where i guess what you're pointing out manny he does have kind of a pacifist vibe he's kind of just laying there you know zach eats the apple he's mm -hmm. like is it good is it good yeah you know this doesn't, <laughs> doesn't seem to be too antagonistic bone in his body but who knows what happens in the years nero and vice bring him down mm -hmm. uh into deep ground and as dirge ends it all there's still so much work to be done. Um, I almost feel like you're going to see in Rebirth a party split where you're going to have like, and this is just some wild prediction I have, right? Like I actually mm -hmm. think it's possible that the main crew doesn't bump into Yuffie anymore. I actually think- No, and I don't want them to. You're going to have a Zack party <laughs> that's going to concern themselves with deep ground. You're going to have Zack, yeah. Yuffie, Yuffie, Vincent, um, Maybe even Cisne. Cisne for Rebirth, please. Cisne, baby! Bro, Cisne, Cisne I, I need her in the next Best game, turk. bro. Best like... turk, not even close. Anyway, yeah. I think we're going to have a Zack party with Yuffie and Vincent. Some of these characters who are always yes. considered oh optional God. Yuffie, or Vincent, on the side. Cisne. And Zack, I don't think that party gets any better. I mean, you just named my three favorite characters. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the Yuffie DLC, do we actually... Because obviously, like, at the end, she sees the play collapse. And, like, mm -hmm. so we know, like, where in the story that she is mm -hmm. has been yeah. inserted. But mm -hmm. do we know what timeline she's in? Or, like, what, like, is she in the Cloud and Company, like, version? Or is she in that, that, is it, like, this Yuffie and, like, the Zack? We don't need to have two separate timelines. It was a brand new Un crazy Unclear, but Sonon? Uh, I want Sonon to come back somehow. I oh, want him to come back. back and he's he's gonna I want him to come back you're gonna have to kill and him. make me cry. You're going to have yeah. to kill him. Yuffie will have to kill Sonon. I yeah, love it. That's what I want. She has to I make cry so hard. Just because of like the history that Zack and Yuffie have, just via like the that'd be the so cute treasure princess side quest. I think it would be. Oh, uh, can we yeah. just imagine great. how great it would be if like they run into each other and he goes like, "Well, well, well," if it isn't the treasure princess. Uh, yeah, that would be cute. That would be cute. Wouldn't it? And she would just be like, shoo, shoo, shoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would kill me. I would love it. 
But I keep trying hmm. to find ways Zach's going to fit into the future because they're making it so, like, for some reason at the behest of some people online, they're making it very obvious it's obvious Zach's not just going to be, like, just some red herring crux yeah. no. mystery. Like, no, he's going to be at the yeah. center of what's no, going on. Theory, which he's going to be very, Christ very important. important. Yeah. I, I have a feeling it, it might be kind of like, I have a feeling that we might be going back and forth. Between mm -hmm. and Zach. You have that, to. That's just me. You have that's to. Just like I would love that. that. Sense, you have to. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Or like, you're that's not going like to play as everybody. That's, that's why you're not. With the original. That's my issue with the original. I pick four people to, to cycle between in my three-man party, and half my party just ends up sitting on the bench the whole time. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. But if you notice, in Remake, they when the, eventually you had four characters in your party instead of three, they kept putting you in scenarios where you had to use everybody, right? They yep. split up Cloud yeah. and Barret over here. They put yeah. Tifa and Aerith over there. They each had their own boss battles. I can't help but think you're just going to see that at a bigger level in the future of the, yeah. print of the mm -hmm. series. Yeah, and the other thing I'm like, I've been thinking about, I think we talked about this on the last one we did as well, but... Just because Crisis Core Reunion and Rebirth are very hand in hand right now, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. they want you to know Zach's story. But like, if you know Zach's story before playing the original, like that spoils like the big Nibelheim twist. Oh yeah, in the original. So right. my mindset is, if they're willing to like release this game so that you know about these events, what else do they have in store that's going to like blow our minds? On oh, it's gonna be big. Time? Yeah, it's like, I, and that makes me so. That's why I'm so excited because it's like they they said that we're we're going to all the same places, but it might just be different, right? And I'm just like, what are they gonna do? You know? <laughs> I've, I've never been this excited for like a new entry in like a series outside of like Kingdom Hearts un until this until yeah. Seven Remake because it's like it's exciting. It's very exciting because to be quite frank, like I loved original ff7 but to be honest for me i thought the ending sucked man <laughs> like it just the game just ends so like ends. what are they gonna do to like are, are we gonna have like more closure like are, are there are things gonna play out different like the same but different you know like i don't know well here's Sorry. the thing that i feel like gets misunderstood a lot about especially that era of square enix is the og ff7 was rushed out the door it was yeah. rushed out the door um Vincent was never meant to be optional. Yuffie was never meant to be mm. optional. All those Wu-Tai quests, all that stuff was never yeah. meant to be optional. They compromised on their vision a lot to get that game out on time. And a lot of mm. what we're seeing now is basically the devs getting their due and getting to do the yeah. things that they were denied when this game was originally made. Which is why I can't help but think we've got this, you know, Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, Aerith, Red Party. And they're probably going to pick up Sid on the way. And I think they're going to go to all the normal spots. Because you don't break the original. Pretend yeah. you never got Yuffie and Vincent. You can take that mm -hmm. party and you can go to all right. the places. Kate Sith too. And you can go to all the places that you that you do in the original. And that's why yeah. I feel like they're going to have this second party. These outliers. The Yuffies. The Vincents. Mm -hmm. The Zach. And you're going to oh go to all the places yeah. they compromised on. All the stuff they didn't get to do in the first iteration. You're going to have this second party that very well may just go explore all the stuff we missed the first time around. Heck oh, yeah. Man. Dude, I just, I can't stop thinking about a Zach and Vincent team up. <laughs> like, that be, that is you, yeah, come on. Amazing. <laughs> we got my girl. Yo, yeah, wait, no one's yeah, mentioned but... Sid though. No one's put any respect on Sid's name yet. Like, is no one just a fan of Sid at all? I don't know. I'm actually hoping Sid's they keep fine. Him, I'm hoping he's they keep fine. Him just the way he's fine. He is. I hope they yeah. keep him just the way he is. I know, you know. Do you think? Do you think they're gonna? Do you think they're gonna like censor some of his? They language? have to. No, they have to. They should not. They no. shouldn't. <laughs> You're gonna take away everything from that character if you do. It's yeah. part of his. It's not pretty to look at. It's not pretty to look at. But yeah. you take it away, he's gonna be stale. This yeah, is the, he, that's this, true. This is a, this is a man reborn. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> this is a man who was denied his yeah. dream and then redeems I mean, there, himself. There, yeah, and there was quite a bit of cussing in in the remake too. I just, mm -hmm. you know, I I really mm -hmm. just want, you know, what I want. I want a big. I don't even know when this would happen. Oh. Maybe it can happen whenever they're like doing like whenever they're in uh, what's Sid's hometowns. I can't remember. Like we're uh, Rocket Town. 
Is that what it is? Or is I, it? I, I think I, it is called Rocket Town. Yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. Well, like, so I, I don't know. I think they should give Sid like one solid F bomb. Just give it to him. Just, just, like, one. <laughs> just give him a solid one, right? And make it at the most hype moment. Of, of his entire of his entire arc, you know. Yeah, it was yes. dope playing through a reunion and going up to do the test or the quest where you're finding like the hidden Wu Tai spies all over like Midgar. <laughs> and when you talk to the guy that was in the exhibit room, he was talking about how he was jealous that somebody else was able to take over that uh, spaceship project that he wanted, yeah. and they mentioned Sid's name. And I was like, that's mm-hmm. like the only reference you get to sit in this entire game, but he's had, so I think, important. Uh, I think they also had a picture of the high wind in that same room. They like, do. Mm-hmm. They do. On the screen, too, which is really cool. Yeah, I love yeah. the small references to it, but I'm excited, honestly. Like, I would love to have like the two parallel stories because it seems like what everyone's hinting at when you look at the preview to the newer, like part two of the remake that's coming out, it's supposed to be focused on Sephiroth, apparently. Like, you know, they had the yeah. image of yeah. they showed what Sephiroth with short hair when he was younger. And it's like, Zach is, he knows Sephiroth from the most previous point in time out of everybody yeah. who's a part of the main cast. It so I feel like gross. he's. He's the person who can like see Sephiroth in a different way. Cloud only sees him through the events that they've had when they fought each other at the mm-hmm. one incident that they had, obviously. But Zach seen him before that when he was a loyal soldier, before he knew anything about his past or any of that other oh, stuff. So I'm, yeah, I'm wondering like if an encounter between those two is going to change or alter the way that Sephiroth looks at things potentially. Like mm-hmm. I just want someone like Genesis or Angeal or Zach to be able to encounter Sephiroth now. Because I yeah. feel like he's going against a new generation of people who don't know the history behind who he was and like all the other things. Instead, it's like, oh, we just need to stop the bad guy. But for Zach, it's like, bro, you were like with me in the fields. We were fighting together. Like you're one of your best friends was Genesis and Angel. You guys came from a similar project together. So imagine getting somebody with that history and that rapport to be able to talk to him and see the way that he is now. Because honestly, I, I feel like there's going to seem like really, really like, like a harsh opinion. But I feel mm-hmm. like they made character a bit lifeless in a sense it's just like oh i just must return to my mother it's like he's nothing more than just Mm -hmm. that and i feel like sephiroth is just so colorful in crisis core because he's like yeah they make you they humanize him yeah and it's like i I want that part of sephiroth back if they want to keep him as an antagonist they can but Mm -hmm. i just hate how it feels like so black and white to me Mm -hmm. i think here's here's the thing that's been going on with sephiroth that this is indeed the advent children sephiroth and unfortunately Mm -hmm. this is contained in like an ff7 novel and i'd prefer if they you know maybe this time put it in the narrative itself but apparently Mm -hmm. the advent children sephiroth in order for him to re-manifest like that he pretty much cast off all his memories except those revolving around Cloud. So that's yep. why, especially like in Remake, if this is the Advent Children Sephiroth, this is a Sephiroth that doesn't even have Angeal and Genesis in mind. Mm-hmm. If this is yeah. indeed the Advent Children yeah. Sephiroth. Um, I think yeah. it's... Which, um, it, you know, the stars are kind of aligning that way. That's yeah. what it's... Mm-hmm. Like. And I think, just like you kind of saw him break when his memories started to come back about Genova and all that, I think you could see the same thing if his memories of Genesis and Angeal started to come back and suddenly you have a Cloud and a Sephiroth who are on the brink, you know? Oh, yeah. That would be and, interesting, yeah. Because didn't you all hear me out Cloud though. in Reunion when he starts doing this in um in the yeah. reactor? Yeah, I started thinking mm-hmm. of Cloud immediately. I'm like, oh, bro. Mm-hmm. What I want, though, is I want Zach to run into him and be like, what the hell, man? You haven't answered any of my phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> but Zach, too, that's what's funny. Cloud and Zach would both kind of yeah. have, I mean, <laughs> Cloud and Sephiroth would both kind of have a mental breakdown at the sight of Zach. Like, everyone's right? like, oh, Cloud would lose it. It's like, well, so would Sephiroth. Yeah. He'd he absolutely, absolutely would. Too. He I would. Side note, but I, I thought it was so funny um, that uh okay again it's my first time playing crisis mm-hmm. core but like like whenever you're like you're in nibelheim and like you know you're like in a <laughs> you have a cut scene in a room you're 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 hanging out with cloud you know you have a good it's a good cut scene and then it's like you leave the room and then like two seconds later email from cloud and it's he's like, shy <laughs> all right he's shy <laughs> so he's shy right Venture but, like, gang, Tifa, let's go like, Tifa would do the same thing you know and it's also like, shy yeah it was just really <laughs> funny i'm like I get it, but <laughs> it was just it was just funny. And we, we actually um we were kind of talking about like, you know, if uh if um if the FF7 cast were like Twitch streamers or Twitch viewers, like 
Cloud would be like the lurker. He like, would. Would say something like every now and then. Like, you, you would be the menace <laughs> to society. You yeah, would be all like, emotes. All emotes. Yeah. Yeah. All emotes yeah. all the time. Yeah, Sephiroth would be like the guy who like, you know, he's got like a thousand people in his stream. He gets like a hundred dollar donation. He's like, yo, man, thanks for the donation. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, but I was, you know, it. what I love about this game and, you know, I'm because they didn't change anything about the story. So it's the nope. same. But like, I, I like the cheese. I like oh, the yeah. cheese in this. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think. I think more people need to embrace that. And I also loved how cheesy 7 Remake was at times. With well, I mean, that's the Final Fantasy BN, brand. I hate know? to break it to people, right. but the Final Fantasy yeah. brand is cheesy and silly, but also comes with its share of, like, seriousness and maturity. Like yeah. fighting to your death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll do it. That'll, that'll do it. But, but just we before gave you do, you, you could be we... dancing with a cactuar, you know? Yes. Like, oh, minutes love, before your death. That. <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Mere minutes. I love it. Before your demise. The element of cheese was it, we were talking about this in the in the pre-roll a little bit, but because we were kind of talking about like how, you know, it's just like it's got like that seven it's got like that PS2, PSP era level design, like that Final Fantasy yeah. 13, that but it like honestly it's like it was a nice change of pace for me to play a game mm. that's just so linear. Just straight through, and then you get missions, and then you do the missions, and then you do, the, and then it's done, and then you, you have a whole list of missions, and keep, and you just you just keep doing missions, and then you go through the story. It was a nice change of pace because, like, a lot of the games that I personally played this year, like for example, Elden Ring, right? There's a whole like open world to explore with like 200 plus bosses in the entire game, and it was just like such a it was such a a nice breath of fresh air to just have a linear story. Like, which just like, I don't have to really think too much. I just kind of run, and then I'm at my destination, and then I kill the things, and then I do it all over again, and then I get to experience a great story with good characters. Yeah, it was a nice, for me, at least at the, like, this came out at a good time for me, because it was just a nice change of pace, you know? And, yeah, that's just me. Well, I'll say, like, yeah, I feel like, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Keep going. Okay. I was just going to say, I feel like the thing I don't like about open world, and I know this has been discussed years ago when open world just start taking over in like the gaming space, is like just because it's open world doesn't mean that it's a good game. And I hate that people are like, oh, open world. Oh, my gosh. It's like if you want to look at open world, look at Elden Ring, look at Breath of the Wild. These are your like examples and templates of what open world should be like. I don't want to just run for an hour to get from point A to point B and then mm -hmm. someone calls it open world. So like I'd rather have a game that's linear if yeah, I enjoy it, yeah. like mm -hmm. as compared mm -hmm. to something that's just huge and empty. And even yeah. though Final Fantasy like Crisis Core is an old game, they do such a good job of like giving you enough to explore. Like yeah. I know I saw this on Andy's stream. He mentioned it one time, but just like the the small things like when you have to go into the one place when you're about to fight Angeal. Uh, the last battle with him, it's like the the voicemails. You can just go and you can listen to all 23 voicemails. And the last yeah. one, there's a hidden item in the trunk. And then you go over. Oh, like, I did I'd, that. Yeah. I'd much rather do that mm -hmm. than just run for an hour yeah. and get from point I, and to I think point B. Like you know? fun. And I, I really loved, oh man, okay, this was actually one of my favorite segments. Even though it took me about an hour. But the man the manor segment. Oh god! Can we hilarious. talk about the manor <laughs> yeah. segment? I I loved it, and I loved like trying to figure it out. But it was funny because it was like the whole time, like I'm like overthinking. I'm like, okay, is there like do the the not like are there six books? Are there two books? Because like there's <laughs> books on the floor, but there's books on top of the shelf. Uh, there's or is it do the apples count? But like for the the crack the code to the safe, or, mm -hmm. or is it the can on the ground? Because I had a, apparently like. Kitties, you didn't have like a can of. No, it changed every time. Apple. I had one apple. Yeah, I had one apple. I had in our a room. can, and I'm like, I don't know if this counts. <laughs> like, no, it's food. But yeah. but the other thing is, they also gave you a little more on that yeah. puzzle in reunion. In in the original, they were just like, here's your cryptic note. Have at. They didn't tell you that it was books. They didn't tell you that it was monsters. They didn't tell you that it was chairs. They didn't give you any of that. They were just like, here's your, here's your cryptic poetry. And Solve honestly, it. Kind of that was one of my funny enough. That was one of my favorite parts of like the game. Oh, <laughs> like, it's just, so like, fun. Like that. It's fun, like figuring it out. You know. Oh 
Oh yeah. Bro, you solved hard. that faster than me, honestly. It took me over an hour. Like it took me like fifty-five minutes. It was so long. I'm like, dude, am I like an idiot? Like, what is going on? It's so straightforward, but I can't no. get it right. Like, yeah, well, because like, it doesn't tell you which number you get wrong. You know, like, yeah. Well, and then you yeah, start overthinking, and then you, yeah. you know, think that you messed up the wrong thing, and yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you're like. When you were counting the legs on the chair, dude, I was laughing so <laughs> Well, dude, because it was like, okay, because then I was, I was questioning. I was like, okay, there's there's four chairs in this room, but do, like, the chairs in other rooms, do those carry over and do those count? And then I was like, well, there's a four-legged bed. Like, does that count? Oh, like, they told you chairs. But it had a question mark next to it. Yeah, oh, they still <laughs> told you chairs. Or is it is Don't there even. other things? Like, and don't make excuses. slowly going insane, and we're Don't make excuses it. for your insanity. The I bed am, was I inexcusable. Am, I'm going to go lock myself in a room and just, just read books <laughs> and become become the new Sephiroth because <laughs> <laughs> because cracking a code to a safe was intense but it was fun i actually enjoyed oh. it yeah maybe i enjoyed it. landy the whole time was like this guy. i enjoyed <laughs> dedicating my my sole purpose to making air three flower wagons and if you didn't yeah. do that you're a monster <laughs> it took me forever to figure out where all the parts of it i had the shinra one already and oh. I, don't even, I think i got it from the squat competition yep you get all of them like, from the squat why not the yeah. other one, like the actual good looking one, I had no idea where any of this stuff was. I'm like, where the heck do yeah. I start with this? And it took me yeah. forever, but it was still worth it. Yeah, that's tough if you don't know what you're looking for. Yeah, um, I, I did not like that at all. My favorite part, though, is like the cutscenes that they show after you build each wagon. Oh, yeah, yeah. they're so, yeah. Cute. <laughs> so cute. So wholesome. The Shinra Which, one, the guy is like, I'll buy this uh, off you. <laughs> oh, no. My favorite is Aerith is like, this doesn't look like a wagon. And Zach's just like, oh, yeah, man, I'm so good at building wagons. But you know, but you know what's funny? When I, when I was young, when I was young and I and I so, would watch all those scenes, I'd be like, man, Aerith is being such a freaking brat. But now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, she's just looking for excuse after excuse to, to keep spend time with, with Zach. Them. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know? And you know what's crazy because i this is something that i didn't pick up just from watching the cutscenes of the game because mm. it's in an email but like so like mm. there was like there's like little things that like really hit hard where it's like oh like the reason why she wears pink all the time mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i did Back not know he that buys her her hair bow yeah and the reason why she carries a basket now and instead well, of the, oh, that is instead the of one the thing that i didn't know i didn't know any of that you read stuff. that in an email that you get and it's like from kunzel yeah, yeah, from which, from by Kunzel, the way, I've it's... accepted that I am Kunzel. I've accepted. <laughs> I accept it. Listen, that's Good a great person rebirth. to be. I, Kunzel's a it. bro. I'll tell no, you, can I you read imagine those texts, though? I was like, the no, meme, it's... like, he's just like me for real. <laughs> Every freaking email I read, I was like, I love this man so much. Okay, but do you think he could come back in Rebirth? He is. Like, what back. if Zachary? No, he he here's the thing, dude. If Zachary does not know him. He's coming. He's going to be the first guy tipped off. They were back. They're like, oh, somebody tell Kunzel. By the way, for those who are watching, like, my dog is under here. So if you see me constantly like this, my, <laughs> my puppy under there. I just wonder what people have been thinking the last 10 minutes. They see me like this. It's like, what is he doing? <laughs> you're just, you're just getting, Literally, just getting what the hell is he doing? Um, but yeah, no, I got it's this. It's a new dance trend. But anyway. Oh, my gosh. I, I forgot what I was saying. Anyway, oh well, no! Can you Kunzel, imagine Kunzel. though? Like, what if oh, Kunzel, what if Zach reaches out to him? No, do you think Zach could like get a hold of um, like you. soldier okay. inside Shinra because of Kunzel? Like, I think so. They're bros. I think Kunzel and Sisne are at the bottom of getting Cloud back to Midgar because Sisne yes. follows Zach. Sisne follows Zach everywhere he goes. When Zach survives that last stand, Sisne knows. She's right. gonna, and she knows I who Cloud it. is. She knows Cloud's predicament. Cisne is the only one who knows their predicament. Mm -hmm. Kunzel is the only one left who's friends with the both of them. I think Cisne mm -hmm. is going to intercept, going to bring Cloud to Kunzel. And then, and there's a little hole in that theory because then those other Shinra guards wouldn't have a need to go say, oh, look, it's Cloud. Let's go tell Kunzel. But maybe Kunzel's playing it close to the chest. I don't know. But to me, I feel like the only way you explain this Zack surviving and them getting back to Midgar safe, it has to be Cisne. Because, like, yeah. think about it. Even if Zack wins sure. that standoff, he's not just going to go walking into Midgar. They've got more no, artillery there. Yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's actually a good point right there. Now that I think about that, it has that. to be that makes Cisne. perfect sense. It has to be Cisne. Oh, you know for what? sure. It me Kunso as a party member. I don't, yes, baby. Like, yeah. I don't know how we would play, but like, just just give it to me. I just <laughs> want more text messages from him. That's all I want. Yo, I want more text of him. message feature. That I want to yes, see. Yes, give it back. That should be in more games. Give this it whole, back. Like, text message email feature. Adds, that should be in more games. Like, it adds like so many like little like things that mm-hmm. just make like. I don't know. It just it makes it feel more real, I guess. Like well, even like the spam emails from like the Genesis and Angio fan clubs. Or the Yo, Shinra, those or the Sh- fan clubs. Or bro. like the Shinra propaganda that you would yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like, bro, like, I get, I got that email like a couple hours ago in my spam. Like it just felt like it just felt like more real and like like we were talking about the 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 basket thing, like the error. Yeah. Thing. Like, mm. I didn't know that like. Because in the e in like one of the emails, she says like, "Oh, like well, or I think whoever's sending it, I don't know Kunzel. if it's like the, if it is console, it's console." Um, uh, where he's like, "Yeah, her like the the flower girl's wagon broke, but she only wants you to fix it." Yeah. So she and it's like that's why she always carries around the basket because he never came back to fix it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does your heart hurt now? It does. <laughs> <laughs> How bad. <laughs> Yeah, I really do like the email thing because it's like I love when someone can tell a story without trying to throw everything in my face. Yeah. Like, like, oh, hey, you have to do it this specific way. Mm-hmm. I like that the emails give you something on the side that's not verbatim from the character. Like how mm-hmm. Tifa was texting Zach. And like in the context of it, I actually like that she was messaging him instead of confronting him directly because she wanted to keep it discreet. But she's yeah. like, have you seen a blonde haired guy in Soldier? Like, and it's so cool that you just kind of see it on the side as you're doing everything else and you make the connection kind of. Yeah. So I would love to have like those emails or messages back. Like Yuffie's randomly just messaging you in the middle of like what you're trying to oh. do. Like that'd be pretty dope, honestly. Like, I think that'd be cool. Yuffie would start a group text. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious, actually. Well, you know, what? I think it's great. Just look, cutscenes are expensive, man. These studios put a they lot. Are. They put millions of dollars into the production of those cutscenes. And if oh, you hmm. limit... If you limit a narrative to only cutscenes, you're going to get a limited narrative. When you find yeah. creative ways to like build characters or push a narrative or inform the player, it makes the whole like experience so much smoother. Like as someone yeah. who enjoyed Final Fantasy 15, it was really annoying I had to hunt down all those freaking like storybooks to figure oh, out yeah. who's going oh my gosh, dude, just, Final like, Fantasy 15. Just shooting Holy it to crap. my phone. Just shoot it to my phone. That's yeah. such a great idea. Much better. Yeah. You know, um you know, I just think things like that are, are so useful. Like things like, for example, in Kingdom Hearts, like the secret reports, those are great. Yeah. But a lot of those you have to go seek out and unlock. Yeah. I like the, yeah. I, I love, yeah. I love that this game just shoots it to your phone when it's time. Yeah. And you, can, you don't even have to read it. You just read it whenever. Yep. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I, uh, like, cause I was, whenever you were talking about that, cause I was thinking of Elden Ring, I mean, it's a completely different game, but like, you know, Souls, Souls games, it, it, there's not really like a lot of like cutscenes going on. Like there's a few here and there, but it's like you want like the narrative. Like you gotta like you read weapons that you pick up. Oh, yeah. You read stuff on the ground, and then like whenever you like read some of these things, and then you seek out some of these quests that are very vague. They don't really tell you where to go. You just kind of kind of like you get an item, and then maybe you have to read it, like read up on it, and figure out what to do next. When you get to like the end of that game, and you read up on like some of like little lore bits you know out of your own volition it like hits like you realize like what's happening on a mm-hmm. much deeper level and so like that's why i love i love stuff like this and like again like elden ring completely different game but i'm just using it as an example like um and even like even the secret reports in kingdom hearts you know i, I don't want to mm-hmm. say anything because i know manny is working through the series right now but like you know, very add, slowly by the way <laughs> <laughs> they add such oh. a a um had such a level of depth to things where it's like, oh. And then some of them, it's like, you don't know who they're written by, but you can kind of theorize mm-hmm. based on mm-hmm. like how it's written. And yeah, like I, I do like, a part of me like really likes being able to, um, to hunt down like those little bits because then I feel rewarded for like yeah. whenever I accomplish this thing. It's like, oh, I get a little extra, mm-hmm. a little extra something. You know what I mean? But the other part of me is like, yeah, like shoot me a text on my phone. Like tell me, tell me what's happening in Tifa's life and what she's thinking and feeling. You know. So. Don't tell anyone she asked about the blonde soldier guy. 
Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Keep Don't tell. Yourself. One thing that like was just like so surprising to me that I never even thought I wanted to know is I never really remembered them going into detail as to why they even like really started the war in Wutai and why they even started Project S and G to begin with, like verbatim. Oh yeah. Like, this is why we did it. It was just like yeah. I, I guess they just wanted world domination or something. I don't know. They, like okay, so I don't really know. What's going yeah. on. So with with Wu Tai, they were just like, we want to put reactors here. And Wu Tai was like, no. no. And Shinra was like, well, we're going to make you say yes. Then you leave us no choice. They were like, <laughs> bet. And it's, it's cool, though, because Zach has a back and forth with the one Wu Tai officer. And both yes. of them are like, we're right. right. In the beginning. Like, yeah. neither of them think they're wrong and neither of them think they're evil. They're like, we don't want this Mako stuff here. And Zach's like, we want to improve your life. So, like, I thought that was so cool. It's not, like, just, like, oh, like, mm -hmm. Shinra's just this evil person. They don't really care about anything. But they're genuinely trying to improve the world, and they believe that this is the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. And then even creating, like, Sephiroth, Angeal, Genesis. I was reading the notes right before Sephiroth loses his mind and burns the entire village. Mm -hmm. And one of the notes that they literally created these modified soldiers with the intention of reducing cost for Mako excavation. Yep. So they made these juiced up people just so they can reduce costs. It wasn't for the sake of, oh, they're going to be evil and destroy all this stuff. Like they had good intentions and it was so cool that like the way that they kind of slipped that in just through notes in that room. I was like, I had no idea. I thought they were just trying to like just make this huge army and have world domination the whole time. But they genuinely just are trying to make the world a better place in the way that they see fit. And it really yeah. just kind of made my mind spin a little bit like, oh, wow. So like, I didn't even know that, you know? But the problem is they also don't realize that what they're doing is also terrible. The world. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, there are some their, aspects of it. And through their like, experimentation, they do have some not so great people working for them, like. Oh, absolutely. Ujo and stuff, you know, and they do kind of create their own demise. Mm -hmm. But you know, like, like, even, like for every Hojo, there's a Reeve to SD. And I think that's one of the things I love about the new perspective. As evil as mm -hmm. the Shinra administration might be, one of the things that I love they did in Remake and that they've touched on in Reunion is that like, hey, normal people work for this company and they're just normal exactly. people that actually, they, they believe they're helping the world. They want to help yeah. the world. Before Mako Energy, they were eating canned beans. Now they've got a stove and a fridge. So of course to them, yeah. they're like, this is just what we have to do. It's like that yeah, guy in Remake. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. And I think even mm -hmm. like some in 7 Remake, like some of the... um. Some of the NPCs, even like I think, even when like the the plate collapsed, um, mm -hmm. like talk about like, and like it would be like Shinra employee. It's like, man, I got a wife and kids. I'm gonna go home to. It's like, yeah, there's like normal people who well, work here. Shinra, Not everybody's a hojo. Shinra you know? yeah. middle manager is yeah. one of the greatest characters in remake, and I will stand on that. I will stand on that. My favorite part, Yuffie DLC, where you face him in Fort Condor, and the whole reason he wants to face you in Fort Condor is so he can learn and teach his daughter. That's Which is adorable. Which is adorable. Mm -hmm. but it's like, oh, is, what the heck? But this is just one of those Shinra <laughs> schmucks, right? You know, it's like, I was not ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, if you haven't done the Fort Condor quests in the DLC... Bro, uh, I honestly, played the crap out of Fort Condor. I did them. Yeah, yeah. Dude, 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 Were you playing against Padley yeah, at the Chad end, bro? Baby, he roasted me, right? <laughs> he roasted have, me so hard. I played the DLC five times, and I'm so bad at Fort Condor that I just avoided it at all costs. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's so I'm good. So there's like, bad. Got, there's the extra pieces? dialogue yeah. with some characters. It adds some immersion, like with Jesse well, and Wedge and like Jesse. Yes, I have to go get no. good. Mm -hmm. I love the whole scene with Jesse because you see she's putting up a front throughout all of remake, and when you catch yeah. her when the cameras aren't rolling, you you see that she's like she's a little stuck up. She's a little. She's got a bit of a stick up her ass, you know. I was so confused by it. I'm like, why is she like a jerk right now? And I thought she was a really she sweet girl. she couldn't like, go on the mission. Yeah. You know, so mm. she, you comfort, you see her, what, how she reacts when she can't go on the mission. You see how upset she is, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's little things like that. As much as I love the overarching plot, it's these little things they keep adding. Like, um, in, mm. just to bring it back to Reunion, a lot of those scenes that used to just be dialogue with a black screen now they yep. show these different shots like that shot of like zach and Cisne with the turks behind them and all that like all that brings mm. so much just even just seeing an image of zach and the turks you kind of get this yeah. you you see like a picture's worth a thousand words right you see it's like oh look there's zach's friend 
but it's also their job to literally monitor his every move. And it's yep. it's hard to see them navigate that. It's hard to watch Cisne and Sung navigate that while also mm-hmm. trying to be friends with Zack. It's it, it creates yeah. a very yeah. interesting dynamic. And then you see that the Turks are like replacing Soldier because Soldier can't work together, but the Turks have teamwork down to a pat, you know, so they get things done efficiently. Like you see it in some of the uh like uh DMW scenes, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They'll cut and Zack will be like, oh I'm here. And they're like, he's like, oh you you all took care of it. You don't need me, yeah. or soldier, do you? The mm-hmm. Turks got it. Like yeah. just little things like that, you know? And then the soldiers quite literally falling apart at the scenes. Yeah. Well, it makes me wonder <laughs> if like this was like a if this was like a controlled demolition by by Shinra mm-hmm. in a sense. Because like Song mentions in the beginning, oh, we're much better paid than you are. It like it sounds yeah. like Shinra had already pretty much moved on and was like, we're even though the the uh the Turks have been around since like the Dirge era, not the Dirge era, um Wherever you flash back to in Dirge, the Ifalna era, the um, Grimoire Valentine era. Is that yeah. his name? Is that Oh, yeah, that Grimoire. Name? Yeah, Grimoire, basically Vincent's dad. Vampire. That era, the Turks <laughs> have been around since then, but it really feels like mm. in Reunion, you're starting to see Shinra just kind of put their resources into the Turks and really move on from Soldier. See Soldier as a mistake, as an abomination. They're, They're all blew monsters. up in their face. Yeah, no, it really didn't go too well. It really no. didn't go too well. Not at all. <laughs> they watched their creations quite literally just like implode. <laughs> and all their plans too. Like they couldn't even, they could yeah. barely beat, win the Wutai War. They had to rely on yeah. a second class soldier, Zach, you know, yeah. to get the job done. They, he was first class in his heart though. He was always first class. <laughs> he was always first By class. By the way, that'll never get old for me either. The scene he finally makes first class and he's just like, oh, Aw, right. Know. Like, that's it. Right. Yeah, well, I'd yeah, because that's what, he that's what he what kind of gets, like, what he thinks he wants, and he's like, well, this isn't what I wanted. Like, yeah. Well, it's not how he pictured it. It's not how he pictured it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it translates to real life. Like, yeah. you ever, like, try for something, it's like, oh, wait, yeah, I've been working so hard for this thing, and now mm-hmm. that I'm here, it's like... <laughs> well, because it's it? not what his, it's yeah. not what his true mm-hmm. goal was. He thought that by reaching first, he would be a hero. Mm-hmm. He just he made those two things were the same thing to him. So when he finally reaches first, so when he finally reaches first, it, after all that crap with Angel goes down, after all the crap with Genesis, like it, he's just like they're like, oh, guess what? You're first, and he's like, what? what? I didn't do anything. I'll like feel, yeah. I'm not a hero. Like, a like you know what hero, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that speaks a lot to like the rest of his development. Well, because now he's looking for something else. He's looking for a new yeah. meaning. And he finds it in Aerith, in, in my he does. I mean, And in his duty as a soldier and in his legacy to Angel, he finds meaning in a lot of things. And you rescuing know. Zach. Yeah. <laughs> or not oh, Zach, Cloud. Cloud. I'm sorry. But you know, I'm like, sorry. But that's the, old, that's the arc of almost every FF7 character is they get cut off from the world that used to give them an identity. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's yeah. literally what all yeah. of them go through. And to see Zach kind of be... Not the first one to go through it, because to be honest, you know, Sephiroth, Genesis, mm-hmm. and Angel go through it too. Um, yeah. But to see sure. him have to deal with it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just crazy, because he, you know, of all the characters, he has some of the most clearly defined goals in the series. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. like Barrett, right? Take down the reactors. And like the president says, okay, then what? Then what? Yeah. Then what, Barrett? <laughs> okay. Knock down the then reactors. Then I run my bar. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Seventh heaven. No, I, yeah. Wait. <laughs> Sorry, time out. I also did not know this either. I did not know that Zach mm-hmm. is the one to give the name of se- to the bar. Seventh, Seventh heaven, heaven to the bar, yeah. I did not know that. And I'm because like, dude, Zach like, is like the, the man. man. Yeah. The man. <laughs> there he is. But like, even like before you boot up the game. It says his legacy gave life to Final Fantasy Seven, Seven, and you see that in through so many ways. Little, through just like little stuff, not just he's through Cloud. Been, yeah, and like he's not the main protagonist. He's not. That's for Cloud. But like, yeah, but just like little things, like Seventh Heaven, for example. It's just it's a small mm-hmm. thing, but it's like yeah, like you that, know, and Zach- that bar was gonna exist anyway. But he gave the name, like he suggested the name, you know. I don't know, it's just little stuff like that that I'm like, wow, like, and like, 
you know, like the devs like want you to see that. I'm not saying like one of them is more like I don't, I don't want this to be like a Zach Cloud debate because I think they're both great characters. I think Cloud is a little more complex just because uh, of stuff that is messed up with in his mind and all the stuff that he goes through, and Zach's more straightforward. But that's not a bad thing, you know. Yeah. Like Zach is straightforward, but he's supposed to be that way, you know. And then you see like how throughout this story, you know, did I become a hero? Like, that was just the whole thing, right? Like, did the I line breaks me oh, every yeah. time. And it's like, yes, you every did. time. It doesn't break you, you're a sociopath, okay? That's a, yeah. That's well, a good yeah, well, because test. it's the very last thing he says. It's the very last thing he thinks mm -hmm. as he goes mm -hmm. down is like, did I finally become a hero? Well, like, I think what frustrates him so man. much, his answer is yes, obviously, because I think what yes. he learned to define hero as is, can I save somebody? Because he couldn't yes. save anyone. He couldn't save Angeal. He couldn't save Genesis. He couldn't save Sephiroth. And you see how much this frustrates yeah. him when he's just trying to save Angeal. But he saves Cloud. And, does. at least as far as OG is concerned, Cloud saves the world. You know, so yeah. his, he was the hero and he did He was the living himself. legacy. Exactly. Yeah. And not only that, he inspires both Cloud and Aerith. Like, you see Aerith's yes. bubbly personality oh, in Remake. So much of that is oh, from Zach. Emul well, that's just the thing. Both her and Cloud are emulating Zach. You know, Aerith yeah. just has her head on her shoulders, you know? Yes. But, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, but going back into what you said, Andy, too, about, you know, Zach paving the way, for lack of a better term, with things like Seventh Heaven. The other thing that makes him fantastic is he reaches across the aisle. Zach's friends with yeah. everybody. He's friends with the yeah. Turks. He's friends with yeah. Sephiroth. He's friends with other soldiers. He's friends with, He's friends with Yuffie. He's friends with Yuffie. He's friends yeah. with Tifa. He almost wins Even though she Vincent. keeps stealing his stuff and <laughs> keeps sending all these most like ridiculous <laughs> treasure hunts. But he's worried all... about her. He keeps doing it because he yeah. cares about her. Yeah, like, it's true. cute. Yeah. Well, he really reaches across the aisle in yeah, a lot of ways. Yeah, he does. Like, if he mm. were, like, if you really do drag and drop Zack, back into the ff7 world like what the like all these people who are at odds with each other suddenly all have a common ally yeah that's true you know yeah. what's that gonna do and you know that's why to me you want to you want to rip my heart out you want to rip my heart out we go to gengaga we go to zach's parents house and there's cisne just having tea with them Oh. Watching over yeah. his parents just like he asked would that not that would be dope, i bet he would that, that would be a dope shattered. like way to introduce him into the next game. It's like right. you're in Gungaga and you just like randomly are at a house. You don't really know what's going on. Then Zach shows up and Cisne's just waiting like, oh, what took you so long? Kind mm -hmm. of like that'd be pretty dope. Oh, my. oh, boy. But there's so much. There's just so much. And like the fact they remastered this game, which is something I never thought they would do. And if I were you, I begged for. Yes. Well, thanks, because you manifested it, and I'm. Oh, really I've been up. begging for years. I just imagine you have a little Zach figure on your desk, like every Sunday. You just light candles around it, and you're just like, "That's the cute." Shrine right That's there. cute. That you think there's one? <laughs> <laughs> now keep this that same original. energy this for Dirge of Cerberus, please. I, I, I need a remake. Of that. Bet, bet. I'll start tweeting about it. Well, honestly, though, I'll start like, my summoning circle. Get a Vincent <laughs> shrine in my. Room. <laughs> if we're gonna talk about dirge and like i don't i don't know if they if they've i can't remember if they've talked about like if they were gonna revisit dirge or not but like they could do like something similar where like refine some of the gameplay mechanics mm -hmm. you know upscale like the entire game to make it look more modern mm -hmm. yeah like you know and it ties in directly to where game. they're going too because we scenario mm -hmm. and the deep ground are Tied into the score or the story because Scarlet has ties with them now. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong. Like... In the original Crisis Core, it wasn't as clear that it was uh, Vice and Nero. Not as clear. Pick them up. Not right? as clear. Okay. Not as clear. No. Also, yeah. like Dirge clear. hadn't come out yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so well, a lot that of was people... supposed to be a big plot twist in Dirge. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But I wonder at what point they kind of knew they were going to do what they did now with this with this style of remake. I think they always knew they were going to remake this game eventually. But I'm wondering where yeah. along the line they decided that, you know, the remake trilogy was happening. That this... Mm -hmm. the Dude, I would, I would argue in. it's as far back as like early 2000s, to be honest. You yeah. know, the first trailer came out so long ago. Like, I think we were still in the PS3 era, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Like, it was like 2005 or something like that. 
when the first trailer for Final Fantasy VII Remake came out. And yeah. it's like, it like I don't know if things out. have changed over time. Yeah. Like, I don't know if things have changed over time or if they've always had the idea of, like, we're going to alter, yeah. like, the ending and how things are. But I honestly, yeah. I feel like I was too young when the game came out. All of us are pretty much too young for, oh, like, to yeah. appreciate the game when, like, it just, just came out. But to feel like we're, like, living through the era of, like, we don't know what's going to happen next. It is, like, the best feeling ever. It's so Because cool. it's, like... Would like we can just talk about theory because if it was like a one to one remake, the game would still be We'd amazing. Not, but I would not be as hype as I am right now. We right, not honestly. Talk about this, is, this is why I think Square Enix is being very deliberate in their language. They this is what a mm -hmm. remaster is. This is what a remake is. And you know, I, for, I and not a remake how you think it is. Not a remake. <laughs> like, I, and look, you know. I, I'm sorry. I, I really don't mean to to harp on anybody, but if you thought remake was going to be a shot for shot, you clearly didn't watch any of the trailers where Barrett got stabbed and there's whispers flying around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, it's just so obvious. You're not yeah. getting the same shot for remake, shot. Remake has nothing to do with the game itself being remade. It has everything to do with specific character intention. Right. Yes. And that's why, that's why part two is not called part two. That's why it's right. called rebirth. Correct. If it was just a remake. It would be called remake part two, but it's not because exactly something is going to happen like people are gonna maybe be reborn like that could hint at like the end of the game or i'm sorry not the end of the game but like that could hint at like the moment where like set like cloud gives sephiroth the black materia sephiroth's reborn that could hint to like i don't know whatever with zach or genesis it could be anything we don't know but what we do know is that it's called Rebirth because of something that's going to be going on in the story, and that something, according to the trailer, revolves heavily around Sephiroth, which is interesting because, like, you know, if you've played several Remake, like, you know that he's the... Him and, like, Aerith are the two who are, like, very aware of everything that's well, going on. Yes, so. this is what throws me for a loop. This is what throws me for a loop. Okay, so let's let's... Mm -hmm. Let's assume, let's grant that this is Advent Children Sephiroth. Well, then <clears throat> technically, there's still a Sephiroth in the crater. Like, and who knows with the change of yeah. date, it could be a lot of different things. Yeah. You have this Advent Children Sephiroth, and then you have this Sephiroth body that is somewhere, yeah. probably still in the crater, on Gaia. And when I hear oh, rebirth, oh, Lazard's gonna pull another one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when I hear rebirth, kind of like what you're getting into there, Andy, I think it's implying Sephiroth, and that Cloud's gonna give him the black materia, and that we're gonna have a rebirthing of that Sephiroth that's encased in the crater. And then it's like, okay, yeah. so what does that mean? Are there you two think Sephiroths now? Like, what wait, 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 wait. What if? Do you think that for some reason? Because I don't know how this, I don't know how all this fate mumbo jumbo works in this universe. I mean, granted, no one really knows how it works at all, ever. You know, we just kind of guess and theorize. But like, do you think that like Advent Children Sephiroth would actually try to eliminate Crater Sephiroth and be like, this is? My it's going to depend. It's going to depend on yeah. whether or not like, we have like two timelines or if this is yeah. a grandfather loop. Because if the timeline's looping back on itself, if he does eliminate himself, he's gone too. Right. You know? Right. So that's, that's true. That, and that's like the only like hole in that is like, well, yeah, if you eliminate yourself, then yeah, like you're Wh done. Which, but, if like... I were to guess what's going on in Remake, I think it's more likely you have a timeline looping back on itself rather than mm. something that diverted two different ways. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that's just a, like I don't know. It's hard for me to think they're gonna do this two timeline thing. Which, by the way, I find it so funny. Everyone's like, everyone goes like, two timelines. What is this? Kingdom Hearts? And it's like, it's like they've been doing one the, timeline. The first Final we've, Fantasy we've game. Had, but like, we've had one. Of... We've had one timeline in Kingdom Hearts for twenty years. Like, yeah, honestly, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like I don't know they, what but they, they did the first Final Fantasy game. It was all but, revolved around a time loop. A time loop, so it's like. That's oh yeah, with Garland think, and the Warriors of Light, yeah. yeah. And that's why I think it's a grandfather loop, because it would be very true to the brand of Final Fantasy, that this is yeah. a timeline mm. looping back on itself. Um, mm -hmm. What that means exactly, I don't know, but what that would mean is that, so if we brought Zack back, that means our characters are going to move forward without realizing the things behind them have changed, because they kind of yeah. hopped out of existence, changed it, and then hopped back in. So it's like everything behind them changed and they're just moving forward like everything back here. Uh, and that's why I think Biggs is alive. 
Because Biggs mm. probably did actually die, but then they yeah. severed off fate, and now he's restored back here, but they got no idea because they're still moving forward. They don't realize Well, just like they got no changed. idea that Zach is still alive. Exactly, yeah. exactly. He, pro- they probably he shows thought- up to the church and she's not there. See that I still can't make sense of because it's like, is that yeah. him going to the is that him going to the church right after dropping Cloud off, or is this him going to the church like at the end of? Uh, well, I made? feel like what, what is the chronology what of that was, scene? Knowing mm-hmm. what he was doing at the end of Crisis Core, like he was going back to Midgar to see Aerith. To see so Aerith, I think that. And at least in how I would like to imagine that, yeah, he's going to go straight there because that's but maybe what maybe there's a do. bit of a delay though. Maybe there's a delay and he yeah. could be stuff like maybe there's BS he has to sort out with Kunzel and Cisne. You know what I mean? Or I mean, like like I think Landy was saying earlier, like Midgar, you got a whole other like army there waiting for yeah. you. You're not just going to go straight through, and you have to worry about yeah. this blonde guy that's you know with you. So it's like laying yeah. on the floor. <laughs> I think he's, I think he's ultimately trying to get there, right? Like that's like immediately like his intention. Like yes, like going to see Aerith, but also like you don't. We don't know what's going to happen in between. Yeah, it know. will make sense if the Turks are like literally with Zach the whole time, though, because oh, the Turks' man. goal is to watch Rufus. Aerith. Rufus. Rufus is the key. And that's what you I'm think starting so? to believe. That's what I'm starting to believe because he could see the whispers at the end. So I actually, I do him. remember that, and I was so confused about it. And also, I was does, like, what? Doesn't he seem a little too playful with Cloud compared to the OG? Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. really antagonistic in the OG, but in, in Remake, he was kind of having fun with him. He's kind of yeah. like, uh, oh, you're making me sweat. You're like, oh, yeah, like you know. slick. Like he was, like, I don't know. Maybe it was just, oh, you're a soldier. Then that means I <laughs> own you. Yeah. Uh-huh, you're yeah. a soldier. Are you though? I completely <laughs> forgot about Rufus. The only thing that they show of Rufus in the uh, crisis core is literally you just get a text message saying, oh, by the way, he's like our new president. <laughs> he's like, new like, president, I think. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's it. it. Like, that's, that's all it. you hear about him throughout well, the game. Well, yeah, so. and they have, th- were their text messages about like, that's why, like, they're like, oh, like, is is this why Lazard like plotted this because he wanted whatever role? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dang. But, like, yeah. I'm really curious. Actually, now that you mentioned that, Rufus does come off a of really mysterious. Like, he's he feels completely different compared to his original character. That, that, yeah, he's just seems really bratty. Seen the people aren't talking about enough. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this dude, like, he looks cool, actually, this time. Like, in the OG game, I'm like, he's, a, he's, he's, he's like a brat. Right? He's, he's like just the son of the son. president. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I was like, whatever. But, like, then, like, the fact that he can see the whispers, he got away, and, like, he just seemed like something was going And on, don't underestimate you know? that Sung, Sung is his right-hand man, and no one really knows. Mm-hmm. Sung, maybe other than Sisne, knows the most about Zack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't underestimate that Sung and Zack are really close. They are as far as coworkers. Could There's go, a reason he's on the DMW. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. True song with the, what is it? The airstrike that he has. Oh, like, like, I got you, Zach. Okay. I'm still <laughs> upset is, that they Zach never plays that voice line. Okay, so in the original, he goes, "I'm trying, I'm trying," and in the new one, he's like, "Not if I can help it." But yeah, That's okay. yeah. Uh, uh, Song and Cisne were the two that vouched for Zack when they yep. tried to put out the hit on him with all the Sentinel soldiers saying like mm-hmm. he's a rogue experiment. Those are the only two people that were there that were like, no, we're going to go and try to protect him. Well, so yeah, I feel Sung, like it would make so Sung much sense. Sung gave the order. Sung mm-hmm. was like, you're going to go save him. You failed. Mm-hmm. But, go save him. <laughs> but like, it just makes sense. Like him getting to the church, like we don't know what the chronological order is, but like Zack getting there. So he got there fast. I feel like the Turks... Like, they'd be serving two purposes. It's like, wow, we want to know what the heck Zach is doing here and, like, how he's here, you know? Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, he can probably help us get to Aerith because, like, mm-hmm. obviously these two are in love. So, like, we can utilize him to get there and then they can be involved with the story like that. I just want, like, the Turks to keep being involved because, like, I'm really enjoying their characters. I used to kind of hate them in the original game because I didn't really know what they were I there for. I love them. They're the best. Like, but the I'm best. starting to appreciate them so much more now, like, just seeing all their characters. Like, even small mm-hmm. things, like, Rude and Reno, when they were, like, shooting at the tower in the Rude helicopter, when they were about to shoot glasses. Tifa. 
like rude like moved the turret so he couldn't kill tifa just like yeah i was just like they actually care about people they just have a job no, that sucks, you know, i don't know if you, know, you like, i don't know if you noticed a little bit of a nod to the original there there's a fight with rude and reno and if tifa's in your party rude will never attack not an yeah. attacker i actually he remember that he Easter egg. yeah 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 which I think it's Dang, cute that's... they're both the same class. I think that's really cute. I, I like to mm -hmm. think that's why Rude has a crush on her. And if anyone's seen Before Crisis, the best chapter is the filler arc where Rude goes on a date and you have to spy on him. Um, so <laughs> Wait, Rude, really? Yeah, no, there's a, there's a chapter in Before Crisis <laughs> where Rude goes on a date and you have to spy on him. It's so funny. Because the Turks Dang. think... The Turks think that the... If I'm not mistaken, the Turks think the person he's dating is like a spy... And they know Rude is like a sucker for women, so they're like, "We gotta, we can't let him do this on his own. We gotta watch him." It's oh, a, that's amazing! Yeah, it's it's, yeah, pretty so it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. But no, the Turks are the best. I want to see are. more of them, and I have to believe that if Zach is alive in the current timeline, he's working hand in hand with the Turks. And honestly, mm -hmm. it makes me suspicious of like the sort of fatalistic attitude that Sung had, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which he's always kind of been that way. Like in Crisis Core, the first scene you meet him, he's like, someone's got to do it. Like someone has to do this job. Like if I didn't do yeah. it, somebody else would be doing it. And he kind of has that same attitude when he's in the room with Rude and Reno. He's like, think of it this way, guys. If we didn't drop the plate, somebody else would have had to drop the plate. So we just spared them a heavy burden, didn't we? Yeah. You know, kind of mm. feeling like he has this role to play. And I have to feel mm. like that comes from Rufus and whatever Rufus might know. And if that connects to Crisis Core in any way, I don't know. But it's just peculiar to me that there's this gap that Zach now survives. He's carrying Cloud mm -hmm. back to Midgar, and he somehow yep. makes it to Aerith's church without a fucking vest full of holes. So yeah, explain that to me. Might have know. changed best. No I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he might have changed. He wanted to look his best for Aerith. I get it. But then the question is like, well, where's Shut Aerith? Up. Why isn't Aerith there? If this is like right yeah, after, like what's she doing? Unless the Turks, I mean, go ahead, go ahead. That's that's a pretty if you know if at that point like she is dead. I mean, that's like in the story, like that takes a while to lead up to that moment. So she could like, just be Turks, at home. The, I think the Turks are keeping him from her because the Turks are like, you can't see Possible. her. The Turks are like, mm -hmm. you are gonna ruin everything if you see her. If you see Aerith, she's gonna, you know. Anyway, I don't know exactly what they would say, but I have to imagine. Imagine they created a world. Where in Rebirth you play as Zack, he can see like he can see Aerith anytime he wants, but out of a sense of duty, he knows he can't. He mm -hmm. has to yeah. stay apart from her. He has mm -hmm. to like she's right there. He could see like imagine a moment where like you're almost following the party or watching him, and he could see Aerith, but it would ruin the mission or his duty if he were to call out to her or let her see him. Yeah. I don't know. Cause think about think about the way that would hurt me. In the best yeah, way. That, 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 that sounds rough right there. That would break me. But think about the way she looked at the idea Zach might still be alive. She didn't look thrilled. And that's not to say she mm. wouldn't be happy, but it seems like she like the idea he's alive creates a disordinance in the plan because this is an Aerith who also seems to have awareness of OG. Mm -hmm. And at the end, when the, the rain is falling and she has that flash of Zach is there and Zach's alive, she immediately goes, I hate it, the steel sky. Like, oh God, the sky's sucking me up already. Like, that's what she says in Crisis Score. She's scared the sky's gonna come and suck her up. And the second she sees Zack, she's like, oh God, I miss it, the steel sky. Cause now this is happening. And it's like, mm. like what, what has to be going through her head that connecting with Zack would frighten her above exciting her? You know, cause it looked like Zack the puppy, I mean, he's excited about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was gonna say, it might have to do with like, consequences of zach coming back like who it could affect who it could derail you know it could do a lot of things there, i feel like there's definitely going to be some consequences oh for but, sure like i don't you know like, yeah, don't you know don't get how... to just change the 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 past without suffering consequences like you know that's too convenient well, that's hmm. why I think ultimately what they what we effectively did was give Sephiroth control over fate. Because in Remake, mm -hmm. during that boss battle, you see Sephiroth, like, absorb all the whispers. So yeah. mm -hmm. what are you supposed to interpret that as? To me, it's like he's got control of fate right now, which is why Rebirth is going to be awful in a lot of ways in terms of, like, watching these characters suffer. Because it just feels to me like we already fell for his trap. And then hmm. there's going to be these temptations. We might have. Yeah. Dude, and what if... I was gonna say, what if in Rebirth, 
I, I, I don't remember if I've ever talked about this before, but like I was playing around with the idea of like, what if, because you know, like before, spoiler, Aerith dies from Sephiroth's hand, right? What? <laughs> um, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, so what if in, in Rebirth, because like before that, Sephiroth takes control of Cloud and he's the one who almost kills her. So, like, what if, like, that happens, but Cloud is the one to actually do it, and Zach is there to witness it? Oh! I do I remember mentioning, that, like, talking smart. about this theory. I was saying, yeah. like, if that were to happen, I can see, um... I remember you mentioning this before. I don't know if it was, Same like, on a call with just us two. But just differently. I can... I could really you know? see Zach intervening because, like, it also goes along so well with Zach's character because he literally says this. I can't remember if it's his fight with Angeal or Genesis, but he's like, "Why do I keep getting thrown into stuff? Like, why do I have to be oh, the one to kind of have to keep save everyone?" If Zach ends up showing up as like Sephiroth's controlling Cloud, and he has to be the one to stop it, it fits so well with his yeah. character because they've done it since the beginning of developing him as being this hero who's always the one that brings peace to chaos. So it's like, mm -hmm. as that's all going on, everyone feels helpless. Zach steps in and he's the one that has to fight to establish order or something. That would be dope, honestly, if we were to see something like that. It could be like a near automata moment where it's like Bruh. you have to choose which character you control. Like <laughs> A2 or 9S, man. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, spoil. Maybe we shouldn't have talked about that. Oh, crap. I didn't hear. I, I, we go, you said oh, Autonomous. You said Autonomous. I hit that eject button. I thought you finished it, Wendy, <laughs> no, I, so that's why I was like. Wait, you see, haven't finished that so game? Here's how, weird, here's how weird I am. I what? finished 2B. I it finished 2B. Don't worry. Finished 2B. I'm halfway through 9S, and I went back and played Replicate, and I just finished the first path. Now I'm doing Kyle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because. Uh, a friend of mine said, because I told him, yeah, I got halfway through 9S and I stopped and I want to get back into it. And he was like, go play Replicant first, then go mm. back to Autonomous. And I was like, okay, okay, I'll do it. And honestly, I like Replicant better. I have to say. A lot of people I think say the story and the characters that the story is way better in Replicant. Also, I hear that a lot. Also, it's so based on Ocarina of Time. I'm not based. Really? Inspired. There's so much Ocarina of Time inspiration in that game. It's hmm. they've just made my heart so happy. They even do the whole da 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 at one point. It's so <laughs> funny. It's just so funny. Yeah, my bad. And I'm sorry if I spoiled it for anyone out there. I didn't. I didn't name specifics, but I was Listen, just like, Andy, I, I named Andy, specifics. <laughs> when people step into the landing, never launch, going they to forget that they're at risk. Now. <laughs> Yeah, but like, what if it gives you the choice of like you have to control either Zach or Cloud, and it's like Buster? Sword oh well, Buster you know Sword. who I'm picking. <laughs> Not even an option. Two Buster Swords, two. Two. Wait, two. <laughs> wait. Zach has a Buster Sword in that cutscene. I don't think he does actually. At actually, the end not. of the Yuffie DLC, I, I don't think he has anything on his back. I th I think he definitely does. Well, well I, now I'm we have to look. It. I'm a fact checker. We got. This. Yeah, <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know. That would be kind of wild, though. Like, you have two people with the same sword going at each other. And yeah, that, that would be... Vanishes from I don't know. It'd be kind of I wonder how that works with the timeline. Do duplicates exist the in the timeline? Sword could like... be a singularity, honestly. It could be yeah. like the, the... Okay, here we go. Let's go. Let's go to best boy here at the end. He's got that buster sword. Oh, he does. Ah, He's got that buster heck yeah. sword. Heck yeah. yeah. That would be pretty intense. Also, I will say, I will say, as somebody with a bottom, uh, like a crooked tooth on my bottom, I'm very appreciative of Square Enix giving Zach like one slightly crooked tooth. My right, it my makes him even more perfect. I never noticed. My, my insecurity. I never bed. noticed either. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. I noticed. Oh god! But That's anyway, so he still has I the noticed. Buster Sword. But it makes you wonder: did he, did he just not drop the Buster Sword off to Cloud yet? Because like maybe this is the moment he learns where he sees. Well, Aerith if he isn't lives, here. why would he? Mm -hmm. True. If yeah, that, lives, that would have never he? happened. He would have never given his legacy to Cloud if he never died. Right. Hmm. Now we have a problem. That's why sometimes I wonder. If... I told you, I just want it to like vanish from Cloud's hand. <laughs> like, <laughs> I want there to be a scene where it just looks like, oh, there. where's my sword? <laughs> but you know what? Those no, no, it'll be like a Kingdom Hearts moment where Zack will show up and it'll swoop See? on. <laughs> <laughs> there can't be two buster swords. 
Oh God! But you uh, know that, that idea. But also, like the I mean the the twenty is it twenty fifth anniversary, thirty fifth anniversary? What anniversary? Thirty fifth for Final Fantasy. Fifth for Final Fantasy. Twenty fifth for FF seven. The art yes. is three characters. Correct. Wild, Sephiroth, and Zach. And Zach. That is, what? and it's Nomura doing the art. That is, you know, it's intentional. It's symbolic. You yes. No. <laughs> you know it's intentional. So, those are the Genova boys. The Genova boys. The, the, the new boy band. The new boy band on the block. The Genova boys. The Genova like boys. It. It's just crazy, though. I just. I, Their I, hit track is Me Gungaga. Me Gungaga. <laughs> oh, God. But, you know, I have to wonder, you know, with everything with, you know, the two Buster Swords, maybe. The alternative thing I wonder is, like, is Genova creating. Because. I see a lot of this in a lot of modern games and a lot of modern anime. Is Genova creating like the ideal fantasy world where Zack gets to be alive and Aerith gets to be alive and oh look, Angeal gets to be here and oh look, Biggs is back and Jesse, she gets to perform at the Golden Saucer. Everyone's satisfying their regrets. Everybody is righting their wrongs, but it's fake. And it's all that Genova reality manipulation that happens with the Geo Stigma. It makes me wonder, like, is the live stream itself experiencing Geo Stigma? And is there this like pocket reality where Genova is gonna stuff all the people that would normally get in the way, give them everything they want as a hopes of steaming them away from stopping their plan this time? Because I don't know, like if you're Sephiroth and Genova this time. I mean, you tried to play it the way you played it in OG, and it didn't work. So what do you do now? You can't just kill Aerith. What do you do? Right. Maybe you try you know it's and... not going to work. Exactly. I, I have to wonder yeah. what the what the new which, plan is. Which which is why I think, and I, I don't, I'm not saying that Sephiroth's going to target anyone differently. You know, I think he's going to try to do something different. But I, I at the end of the day, I, I still think like. Aerith will die in the end, but I think it's because she knows she has to sacrifice. You know I mean? Yeah, and it's gonna and, make me cry. Yeah. And she gets <laughs> that from Zach. She does. <laughs> you know, she does yeah. because Imagine, duty. Oh God, if Aerith had a last stand, and it's just her, like, kind of taking on the final blow while everyone can get away or something. I don't know. Oh my! I could just see it. I would love it. I would love it if it like if Aerith it, fights like the um the I don't remember what version of Genova you fight after. That happens. If Zach's, uh, do you think he's gonna let her do that by herself? I doubt no. it. I think he'd go with her. I have always maintained the position the final scene of the remake trilogy will be the final scene of Advent Children recontextualized. Yep. You know, Zach yep. and Aerith going into the live stream where they belong. And that's yep. why I almost wonder like if you guys remember how um Advent Children ended, like Cloud kind of got put into the, the live stream waters and got cleansed. I wonder yep. if this is all like a projected dream that is his cleansing in a way like if what's going on yeah. in remake is actually just cloud healing in the live stream or healing in the waters Ooh. you know and he's kind of just like fine this is some way for him to cope with Aerith's loss and zach's loss and so i don't know sometimes i wonder but i can't help but shake the idea that that's going to be the last thing we see is cloud fully healed fully forgiven and zach and Aerith moving on to become the guardians of the planet like, mm -hmm. I, I can't help but wonder if that's how this is all going to end. Because how else do you end it? Yeah. You can't yeah. just end it like you ended OG, you know? No. That was, no offense, the was ending boring. literally is just, like, <laughs> falling off a cliff, honestly, though. Just, yeah. like, everything yeah. happens so quick. No, but I, I think it's, I think it's, and that would be a good way to even tie in Advent Children even more. Like, just, yeah. like, you know, like, just not saying that, like, it's not already tied in with, like, this potential Sephiroth stuff, but like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think honestly, I feel like almost any ending that they give us for this remake trilogy will be better than the original. I'm hoping anyway. the way that they're building it up, I feel like it's inevitable that they're going to end up having something that's much better than the original. Like mm -hmm. the way that I see it is like, I kind of like that idea of like Genova giving everyone what they want so that they won't be there to contest when things like actually climax mm -hmm. but i think it'd be really cool if like they were all given a choice of whether they wanted to kind of stick to 
the this false reality that they have like oh i kind of like the comfortability of zach still being here or i like the comfortability mm -hmm. of Aerith still being alive but no matter what like no matter what you do in this timeline if things aren't aligned with the way they originally happened it's going to end up in sephiroth's favor mm -hmm. so it's yeah. like you have to sacrifice these two in some way shape or form and you have to make that sacrifice in order to win this fight. Mm -hmm. Or you can stick with, oh, well, we have these people back. Let's try to find another way. And then it's like they're going to try to ex like exhaust their options to realize, oh, wait, we're back to square one. And we have to do what we have to originally do just so that we can win this and save the world, kind of. So I think that'd be pretty dope, to tell you the truth. I would, too, because it does need an actual ending, which is what I would ask for, is that we just have a punctuated ending. Show me mm -hmm. what the ending is. Finalize it, you know, in a way that does or doesn't satisfy everybody just so long as it's a concrete ending i think i'd be i think i'd be happy yeah i, I feel like i wouldn't like the ending if everyone just lived happily ever after no and there's everyone be got some what pain. they want there has yeah, to be some be form some of loss because that's what creates a good story like i feel yeah, like that's, well that's the whole crux of final fantasy 7 like every yeah. character in your party and even beyond that, but like specifically your party has lost something, you know, and yeah, no, I agree. That's literally Final Fantasy in a nutshell. I feel like every game, <laughs> yeah. like somebody that you really care about just dies, bro. <laughs> You're just like, what the heck, man? Like, I wanted you to be here, but it, it makes the journey so much just more like captivating for like the protagonist kind of. Mm -hmm. Like I'm thinking back to like Final Fantasy 4, you know, with like just like the things that happen in there. How many people had to sacrifice themselves? just for Cecil to be able to, you know, make it all the way to the end and fight the antagonist mm -hmm. in a game. I feel like, like, if you have a game without sacrifice, even, like, just looking at Yuffie's, like, uh, DLC with everything that happened with Sonan. Like, oh, while really? it was really sad, and I did not expect that to happen, to tell you the oh, truth. Oh, no, I but I like, loved it. it I feel like so it matured good. her so much. Like, her seeing something like that, because everything was a joke to her before. Like, yeah. oh, we're yeah. Wu-Tai spies, and we're just going to do this. Like, even the way that she's spying on people in Midgar is so painfully obvious. Like, when people are talking in town, she's, like, putting her hand out and just, like, right behind people. It's almost like a joke, like, things aren't real yet. But I feel like when that happened, it's like, whoa, this is very oh. real. I, I've seen anguish, you know, I've seen pain. And it's like, and it what? changed her, and I feel like it makes it's going to make her a better character when the next part of the game comes out. So with all that being said, I feel like somebody has to die. Someone and you know does. What? I, don't know I think that would also be a nice way as well to, you know, if there is that Zack and Yuffie reunion for them to actually like talk Bond? about Bond? Well, I feel like she, yeah. that would be like a comfortable person for her to meet up with. You know, I feel like Zack might be one of the people that she would run into and like it would be comfortable for her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'll, I would bank on there's going to be some death and sacrifice just because oh, you, for you, sure. can't, you can't have Loveless as like a prophetic script and talk about sacrifice at world's end. Mm. You know, so I, I, I think that's almost a given. I think they mm -hmm. understand the impact Aerith's death had in the original, and I don't think they underestimate that. I think they know that's part of what made the experience so memorable. That's They know mm. that's part of what made it so special. Uh, they're not silly. They're not going to create some. I don't think you're going to get some fantasy ha happy, happy go lucky. Everybody's no, every, you yeah. know, absolutely lo not. Lollipops and rainbows ending. I don't think you get that. I think things will be happier than the original. You know, so yeah. that, you know, so that in theory, Advent Children isn't necessary. You don't have a cloud who's brooding and depressed over Eric's death. Maybe things happen in a way that he can actually make peace with himself. But yeah. you know, I think I think that loss and sacrifice is going to be there because, like you said, it's Final Fantasy. It's par for the course yeah. at this point. Yeah, and again, specifically FF Seven, where oh, yeah. you know the whole I, like the whole theme of these characters is loss. Mm -hmm. Somebody has lost mm -hmm. something, you know. Actually, true. Yeah, that's kind of depressing that I think about it. But that's yeah. But you know what? It's like a, it's like it's a trauma that bonds the whole that bonds the whole crew together. They all have that in common. Yeah. They've all lost something. They've all been cut off mm -hmm. from a world or a family or a, a group or something. Um, you know, whether it's Avalanche becoming a Splinter Cell or it becomes Yuffie's father wanting to throw away mm -hmm. the old ways. Like it's it's you just see that left and right. Um, we are coming up on an hour and forty minutes already. Is there, any, yeah, is there anything we haven't talked Talking. about that you guys wanted to touch on? Oh, this is a quick thing right here. Yeah. 
I cannot understand anyone who ships Cloud and Aerith personally. Like, oh, we're going I, there. I'm, so I'm we're not going there. So we're going I don't there. understand it. I, we went I there. do but not. We went there. I, I Manny, the I floor is yours. The floor is yours. Listen, <laughs> listen. I didn't play Crisis Core. I've never played the PSP version. I barely watched the cutscene. So I'm completely new to the game. The fact that people are fully aware of Crisis Core and they still shipped Cloud with Aerith is so depressing to me. I, because, I, like, you're basically I, shipping Aerith with an empty shell of what used to be the person that you were in love with. Yeah, it's, it's like not, yeah, literally, exactly. it's a junior versity it's Zach sad. in it's every sad. way, shape, and form. I feel like Zach's it's just Zach, oh no. like <laughs> I, I just feel like Zach is just better in every way. You know, like I mean, don't get me wrong. OG Final Fantasy VII, when Cloud finally snaps out of it, when Tifa tells him the truth, he realizes who he actually is, and he develops his own character. I feel like Cloud's character progression is just so dope at that part. You know, and even in the remake, you can see him taking strides towards like him being timid, but him realizing he needs to take leadership, you know, and he needs to be the people, the person that leads because he knows he's capable of doing X, Y, and Z. But it's like with the whole shipping thing, like I just don't like I can't make a single argument for Cloud over Zach when it That's comes to shipping. Shipping in general, though. Like, like it makes people, no I, sense. People are gonna <laughs> ship what they want to ship, and sometimes there's no rhyme or reason to it. Yeah, I um, I mean, I obviously like am like, oh yeah, I mean, like I so like I I look at like Cloud and Aerith, and I'm like, definitely think there's like feelings there, but like, all right, there like definitely the same, are, but yeah, yeah. but the, but, but it's no weird, it, it, and this is where I'm kind of but, with Manny is like they're both emulating yeah. Zach, you know, they are yes. like it, it doesn't it it wouldn't yeah, yeah. It, Cloud, you can't fall in love with me, it wouldn't be real. It wouldn't be real because I'd just be falling yeah. in love with the part of you that's like Zach, and yeah. you would just be falling in love with a me that's just posturing, is projecting. I'm not, you know, Aerith is yeah. actually very insecure and is actually not very confident and wants to give up, you know? Yeah. Like she's a very conflicted individual, much like Tifa mm. in that way. But again, like Cloud and Aerith don't become fully realized until they've actually kind of moved on from each other. You know, when Aerith yeah. goes to fulfill her duty and becomes a guardian of the planet, thus reuniting with Zack, and Cloud goes and starts to settle into his own personality, the personality that Tifa actually fell in love with. You know, Tifa yeah. didn't fall in love with yeah. the Zack impersonator. She wants Cloud. No. She wants the guy from mm -hmm. five right. years ago. You know, she so wants her blonde knight in shining armor and mm -hmm. soldier to come Wait, rescue her. Wait, another small an thing. Email. Wait, another you small know? thing. I didn't know that Tifa literally learned how to fight like literally just as something to pass the time until cloud got back oh like, yeah she said it in one yeah. of the messages she was like i literally start learning how to fight just because yeah. i'm like kind of waiting for my knight in shining armor to get here you know what much. i um i haven't watched this entire video but i landy i know you're familiar with final fantasy uh final fantasy peasant yeah his channel like fantastic channel by mm -hmm. the way uh he came out with a video i think recently it was like it was like the cloud earth debate in 10 minutes or less or something. And so he was, he made a very interesting point where like, um, and again, I'm paraphrasing. I haven't watched the whole thing. I only just watched bits of it, but he was saying how it's like, you know, and again, like people interpret things differently and that's, that's fine. Why am I holding this napkin? I don't know. Um, people interpret things differently and that's fine. You know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, the way that he, that way that he saw it was like, well, it's kind of like Aerith is like, I don't want to say like Aerith is like Cloud's therapist, but it's kind of like if you like, kind of like if you like go to see like a therapist, but then like you fall in love with your therapist kind of thing. And like he, again, it was like, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he kind of like brought that up and it's like, it's like, yeah, like, I guess I could like see that, you know, like just, and also like Aerith, especially in Remake being like, don't fall in love with me. <laughs> I don't. Whatever it is, yeah. it's not real. She says something like yeah. that, which can't be yeah. ignored, which makes me think of like that whole fantasy world thing. It's like, Cloud, you're going to be tempted with a world where you and I don't de like depart, but like that's not a real world, Cloud. Like that, that image you want. He's like, don't I get a say in this? And you know, I get it, but it's yeah. like, that's why I can't help but yeah. think that might be where they're headed. But who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Long, long road to go. Yeah. Uh, so with that, is there anything else missing by chance? This is usually when like the chat would be throwing a million things at us, but 
as that's we true. know, the, the almighty algorithm was not in our favor tonight, but that's okay. It was not. <laughs> it said no. It said no. It knew It knew we were too powerful. It knew Manny was going to bring up shipping. It knew. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I was waiting for that. I had that in my back pocket. No, like, when, it, when are we going to talk no, about ships, dude? Because I'm ready. I don't, even, I don't even play on that playground because I don't try <laughs> to make sense of it. Because people will ship what they want. Yeah. And people get very touchy about it. And so I just don't go there. Like. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, it just, I don't know. It just, it just spurs up toxicity on, on it all. Does it's, it's all it does. It should the time. be a fun thing. It should be a fun thing. Have, it should just be a fun thing. Should, yeah, you want to ship Cloud and Aerith, that's people... fun. Make your fan art, have your fan Yeah, action, do what you want. Just don't deny what's in the story. Don't deny that, like, Aerith yeah. is dead, therefore she yeah. can't be with Cloud. Let's just... Yeah. Don't that's deny kind of what I was Zach's at, existence yeah. either. And then what like... happening, it, like, it's, like, I noticed, like, all, like, the I, I've never understood Zach hate, but... Like, but there, it's out there. Like Zach hates. Well, exists, because he he threatens the whole he threatens the whole Cloud Earth ship, yes, which is and why they hate him. Primarily but, because that's of hilarious. Who are, and it's like, upsetting Cloud because yeah. some people don't know how to separate their ship from the cannon, which is the problem. Yeah. Well. <laughs> on there that you note. go. <laughs> on that note. There you go. Getting fired. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah. Well, I mean, I like, don't know if there was anything else. Yeah, I, I think can't. we talked about almost everything. I think we touched Game's on fun pretty overall. much everything. I think it's a like, great play game. Crisis Core. Play Please. Crisis Core, and like if, especially if you want to play. If you're looking this to get your hands on Rebirth, if you're looking you know to get what? your hands on Rebirth, day, you got to play it. At the end of the day. It's still a PSP, like PS2, PSP era game. So, like, the cheese is there, but I like the cheese, you know? Like, it works. We are cringe and we're proud. I am cringe, but I am. Remember when I told you our enemy was all that caused suffering? I caused my own suffering. (laughs) Yeah. I remember. (laughs) Hot topic the dialogue. I'm like, yep. This is a, this is a, this is a PSP game. I love it though. I love it though. Me too. It okay, yeah, me, me, too. me too. So much. Oh, it's great. But no, seriously, like if anyone was debating playing this game for whatever just reason, please stop debating. Just play it. Just play it. I, I will that, admit when I saw the price of it, when I saw the price of it, I was second guessing whether I wanted to nah, play it. Nah, it's worth it, man. For 50 bucks. I was like, it's like a PSP it. port, basically. But no, it is, I would pay $60 for this game. It's a PSP port. I would pay 60 bucks for this game. It's a game, full game. It's, it it's really good. Say it again. I'm going to put on Switch. Oh, yeah, true, actually. Yeah, I would. I heard the Switch port was actually really good for this game, too, by the way. Mm-hmm. I believe it. Yeah. Well, I got it on PS5 and it runs it runs very smoothly. Yeah. Very oh, PC Master so Race, good. man. It's very smooth. It's amazing. Very, yeah, no, I, I was tempted to get it on PC, but I, I really like having a jewel case. I really yeah. do. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh yeah, I guess, you know, with that note, um if you guys want to maybe go around the circle, let everyone know where they can find you, a little snippet about what you're about, and then we'll close this one out. Somebody's yeah. got to jump on the grenade first, so go ahead. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start. Uh, I go by Andy Brew. Uh, you can just find me on YouTube as Andy Brew. I'm um, on Twitter as Andy underscore Brew underscore. I have two underscores on my name because I have to because Twitter. And uh, you can find me on Twitch, Andy Brew 48. Uh, I stream a variety of games uh, and make other videos as well. Um, I love Final Fantasy. I love Kingdom Hearts. I'm a big Crash Bandicoot fan. Uh I, I, I like a lot of things, so, you know, if you want to come on by, we primarily do first playthroughs on my channel, um, so if you want to come on by, that's where you can find me. Hey. Nice. I am Kitties and Middies. I go by Kitties and Middies everywhere, uh, except on Twitter, because my name's too long, so it's Kitties and Mitt Eat One. <laughs> <laughs> That nice. is the only place that is different. Um, but yeah, I am a huge fan, obviously, of Crisis Core. Crisis Core is my favorite game of all time. But I'm also a big fan of Kingdom Hearts. The world ends with you, Danganronpa. Um, and if you're into, like, art and K-pop, I'd touch on those on various platforms. So, yeah, check me out. It's a fun time. I'm cringe and I'm proud. <laughs> And if you want to find me, I go by uh, Unknown Live on everything on YouTube. It's at un- or Unknown96 uh, because Unknown is taken, unfortunately. And 
sucks, but that's just the way that life goes, you know? But um, I am not really the most consistent when it comes to uploading stuff just because I focus on other things in life. But I do enjoy stuff like this. But I also play a lot of JRPGs. Final Fantasy VII is like my favorite game series all time easily. First game I've ever played was Final Fantasy VII OG. So it has a special place in my heart. But um, yeah, feel free to follow me there. Feel free to reach out to me. We can always talk about some games or any other stuff. Beautiful. And listen, if you guys don't want to do the hunting, I've dropped their links in the description below. Should keep it nice and easy for you. Uh, thank you to all three of you for uh, coming on. This was a great time. Um, you know, when the yeah, show thanks is, for having us. Next time the show is a rebirth trailer, more than happy to do it again. Round table. Yeah, round table. Yeah, yeah. Go, <laughs> you know, it would be kind of it would be kind of fun to actually analyze it live on stream. Ooh, that might be that's a, an that idea. might be that might be an, that's idea. an idea. That's an idea. That's an idea. We'll be talking. We'll be talking. But oh yeah. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, sickos and normies, thank you so much for hanging out. Listen, I know this one was a little wonky because it didn't go live, so we had to pre-upload it. But it is what it is. We don't stop. Thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.